Yeah, 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 we're dancing and we're moving and we're grooving on a mother effing Wednesday. 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 We're really moving on a Wednesday. Wednesday. A Wednesday. A Wednesday. Wednesday. Let's keep it going, motherfuckers. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Collider Live. Uh, coming in coming in hot here on a, <laughs> on a Wednesday. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you're doing very Good well. And hello. What's wrong, Roxy? Roxy I didn't Shriner's realize Roka was in here. I didn't include him in my tweet. Oh, oh, dude. Well, he's only That's gonna, all right, Roxy. I'm sorry. Well, Roka does uh, does the wrestling recaps uh, oh. for Pro Wrestling Sheet on, on Wednesday, and uh, Tuesday and yeah, Wednesday, Tuesday so you Wednesday. can check that out on Pro Wrestling Sheet, uh, the YouTube channel, and I believe that you can see it posted on the website. Mm -hmm. Him and Ryan sat and do that, but he's here for a little bit because we're going to be talking about a few things that he wants to get his take on for sure and um we have a lot to talk about we got a lot to talk about today <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes 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 um what's happening there are a lot of things that we're going to talk about i mean shoot man not only there's stuff on this show that we have set up yes everyone i know you're tuning in today to find out how the how the big screening of us went with josh Makuga there. We're going to talk about that for sure. I'm sure you all saw the wonderful tweet from the Hollywood Reporter yesterday. <laughs> <It was amazing. laughs> um, amazing. Uh, Riley, uh, Riley was sleepwalking and banged his head up. We're going to talk about that and see what oh, happened there. Boy. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I started developing a snoring habit that I didn't realize that I, that I did, which sucks. Uh, talk about that as well, and and there's a few other things that we're going to get into today. But a lot of movie news today, really mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of news hit. Plus yeah. some television, just Stranger Things that dropped. Um, yeah, man, and we'll, we'll we'll review a non-spoiler kind of review of us. And uh, yeah, Doreen is going to call in because she sat next to Makuga last night. So there's there's so much. There's just so much to talk about. But I do want to start off with the fact that this Saturday. We're all going to be, well, Makuga's going to be out at a wedding, but we're all going to be at the free-for-all downtown L.A., the free-for-all. It is going to be 40 competitors, a lot of Collider Live peeps there. Everybody's going to be there, theschmodownlive.com. You can get your tickets now, schmodownlive.com. There are about 30 tickets left, which is cool, 30 tickets left. Uh, you can get those tickets if you want to come check it out. But the other thing is you can get the live stream. If you can't be in L.A., you can get the live stream. You can get those, those, those actually right now. Same thing, the SchmodownLive.com. Makuga, I know you're bummed because this is one of your favorite events. Oh, dude, I loved being in it last year. Uh, here's the thing, and I know why you keep scheduling um, these events without me is because you're you know win. I have a yeah, legitimate yeah. shot at winning. I know you're going to win. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, Roko. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but, listen. Your last entrances year, are legendary. Bro. Last year, and, 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 yeah, yeah. Last year, I went. I went six rounds. Yeah, five, five or six rounds yeah. in the free for all. Frankie numbers. Tweet me and tell me that's true. Yeah, and Elliot only went one. But right. I'm not trying to that like bat sense. teammates up here. But right. yeah, not like. Why did you just throw well, Elliot? Because everybody was, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. It was it was silly. I'm sorry, Elliot. I love you. Um, He's no, the but I like I went into the free for all, and it was a in that middle part of last year's free for all was a friggin' gauntlet of oh, awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. And then they all knocked each year. other yeah. out. And I was like, all right, here's my chance. Get in there. God, he's going head body, head yeah, body, yeah, yeah. right? You are definitely the Toro Gotti of the Schmodown. There's yeah. no doubt about it. And, and I like, thought I was performing pretty well. And when I did get knocked out, it was kind of just on questions that I would have never gotten, even if I, like, had done research. Right. Right? Just my brain didn't know those movies. Right. And that's, and that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Riley, who's a, a two-time uh, movie trivia showdown champion, no yeah. to notoriously terrible in the free from. Yeah. Notoriously. Yeah. I just, I always seem to get the, the wrong batch of questions and I go in there and I'm like, what the fuck? So I think your record, because I watched it the other day with my daughter. She wanted to watch the first one, right? Yeah. She was very excited when you were in there. I think you went four rounds, three yeah. or four rounds. Yeah. That's the most you've ever gone. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Roka, Roka though, Roka, you've been in two of these things. Your first, two. You were the champion in the first one. Yeah, yeah. And then last but year. But that had like eight people. No, no, no. The first, the first one, the first one was, I think, first no, one first was, one we had a lot. Yeah, the first one was that, was that, was that legendary when it, when it was yeah. Merle sitting on the table. It was yeah. Merle, Roka, Bibiani, and Draco and McQueen, McQueen, McQueen. sitting four at of them the clear. Yeah. yeah, sitting at the table, and then uh, they, they were wiping people out left and right. It and was the best. Yeah, and Draco wasn't even in there, and they, everybody would, it was like a rotating chair. Someone would come in, they would get questions, and then out. So like, no, this is gonna be the final table, and Draco walks in, gets five right, 
Everybody else got four. He knocks yeah. out Never. all mm-hmm. of them. So Bibiani could have fell on his sword for all of he was us. A horseman back then. He, yeah, it was yeah. horseman. But he was like, "I'm not going to do that," because of course. Yeah. And he was like, uh, <laughs> so he he ended up knocking us all out, including himself. He yeah. took himself out. Took himself out instead of taking just himself out, and leaving the rest of us on the table. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was a great dramatic moment. A lot right. of people say it's I, favorite one. I yeah. remember that very well, and I remember the second one very well, and I remember beforehand Christian telling me how important it was that I was at them, and nothing makes me feel more appreciated than when Christian asked me today, have you ever seen one of these? <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember something. You, you got to remember how many people come into these things, too. And I, remember, I don't remember. I know you've been to a lot. I don't know from all. The free for all. all. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, it's true. Well, again, uh, Riley can't laugh because he just got <laughs> Botox injections in his lips. Did you get Botox? No. It looks like he did. That's oh. all. No, you know what? Happened. I know. I know. I'm just saying. From I my angle, help. it's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. From my oh, angle, you I'm look sorry. like an Orange County housewife oh, who just geez. had a little too much. You have a little no too much. Idea. The first thing Riley said to me this morning was like, "You know what? This is actually really painful. I hope that nobody pokes fun at it." And, and when, when Makuga <laughs> comes in, yeah. when, let me yeah. tell you. Can I tell you? Wait, hold on, Makuga. Can I tell you something? Sure. The conversation that these two were having outside, where they were like, "Yeah, Riley's going to talk about it," <laughs> but he wanted to be very serious. And I was like, "Have you ever watched this?" Show? No, 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 no. <laughs> no we can joke went, and have fun. I went, by, but... I went by like this. I went, "Yeah." <laughs> it's, <laughs> Got my water. It's, the, it's funny. Yeah, we can have fun about it. The what's happening next is kind of serious, right? Well, that's the thing. Well, I do yeah. want to. We'll talk about. We'll that. talk about. Yeah, it. We'll Don't get into that in a second. Look, is that your serious face now? Yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay, what'd you do? Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah. His face Way to go. Um, oh, you're fine. Did Julie leave you or something? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. All right, listen. So, <laughs> oh gosh, I can't be with somebody with Botox in their face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll go down, and I'll look like a Kardashian. So we're fine. You're out of here, Botox face. Um, but yeah, once again, guys, that is downtown LA, the Globe Theater. Forty competitors. You get to see if you've never seen one before, and you live in LA, you want to come out and see the Collider Live crew come and check us out. But if you've never seen one before, this is the one to get yourselves into it because it is every single competitor. I mean, it is so competitive. It is so fun. It is. It, if you're a wrestling fan, it's the Royal Rumble. I'll be there. Will it matter? <laughs> Maybe not. Probably. Probably well, not. But well, I'll be there. Well, because if you have some, you look your manager, so you we might, true. might see you walk walk to the uh, walk to the ring with somebody too. Also, yeah. you know, you throw in the aspect that it's live. In front of all these people, and the you could argue the Schmodown League has become super effing serious oh, now. Yeah. People study like crazy, yeah. so you're going to get the best of what people uh, have been building for over the last three years. And these new kids coming in who are going to be in this thing really want to show out what they can do. So this may be the best free for all we've had. Yeah. I think so too. I yes. agree because it's it's just the trivia aspect of it. Yeah. Right. Now you get to see who actually has the most knowledge. It's true. First and it's like first round questions yeah. too. So yeah, yeah. All right. So you if you were supposedly to, you can't pick yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, we, I don't know who you've announced is playing. So if you were so if you think but even so if I don't announce it if this person is in it. So okay. so everyone gets one person they think you cannot pick yourself that is going to win mm-hmm. it. If you don't if you if you're in it and you're not if you don't win. Who do you think is the next in line to win? So you got one person that could win this whole thing. I can't. I have to take myself out of this. Why is that? <laughs> because I saw the lineup. You, you showed it to me. Oh, yes. Oh. That's right. Because I knew so, you weren't going to yeah, be there. I, okay, I, that's fine. I, you I can take, take yourself out. out. Mm. You can take yourself out. You could have just pretended you didn't know the lineup. And then, and then predicted that's it well. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's, it's true. Oh, oh, you know the order. He knows, know he knows the, the order. order. I showed him the order oh, yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So, we'll start with the, uh, with, the with well. Start over there. We'll start with the former two-time champion, John Roca. Oh, Jesus. This is a tough. Who you got? So, out of all the people that you know out there, if they get a good I got to go. Listen, if I can't choose myself. Yeah. Such a cocky oh, yeah. thing. God damn it. Yeah. Well, that's what it makes them. That's what oh, makes yeah, them that's him. It's great. It's great. Well, if I can't pick myself, I guess I'll pick my <laughs> doppelganger that lives in a tunnel. That's right. Speak, <laughs> speaking of us, <laughs> um, fuck. I guess I got to go Danny Boy. I got to go, go Dan- Danny as much Burrow. As much as a large part of me is thinking that Ethan might take this because he right. came so close last year, yeah. uh, I think Dan's on a whole other level over the last few months. So and got, his yeah. drive, yeah, I got Merle in this one. The All right. Yeah, I was going the same. I'm Dan. thinking Ethan. Oh, Ethan, okay. Yeah, I'm... 
I'm going to go with Ethan. Okay. Yeah. And 100% depends on people's numbers, but yeah. if mm-hmm. if I'm doing it, everybody with a fair shot, I say Rachel. You say Rachel. Rachel's a great yeah. choice. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Rachel's having a hell of a year so far, too. Yeah, true. I, there's nothing she doesn't know. No, the Shire Rules so. match, by the way, if you are a Patreon, uh, the Shire Rules critically acclaimed is up for patrons. It will be open to the public on Thursday, so go and check that out. All right. I want to move on here to, to um, like we said, we have uh, Miss Versace over here w- with your face. <laughs> Donatella. So, yeah, Donatella. So what's a... What's a <laughs> what, 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 so what, okay. I believe the words you're looking for are what the fuck happened. Yeah, yeah. So tell, tell us what happened. Because I Jenny, gotta, yeah, I gotta, remember, I'm on your side. Yeah. I know. It's okay. I'm well, the here, only one, but well, I, so, right. I, don't know, I don't know if I told you this. So this is, this is again, to show you yeah. my daughter, right? I'm walking yesterday, and, and I, Riley says, I got hurt. I'm not going to be on the show tomorrow. Roka's going to handle producing. So I call him, and I'm like, you, you, you okay? He's like, yeah, this is what happened. I have to go to emergency care. And, I, and my daughter over here is as they're walking. She's like, so it was, there's Mark Riley. He's like, yeah, it's Mark Riley. He's he's, he's got, he hurt himself. He's got to go to the urgent care. And she goes, he's gonna be able to do the free for all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there's a oh there's there's a little bit of a period there that I was like, I don't think I don't know if you can do, do it. it. Yeah. So what happened? Three o'clock in the morning, um, I leapt out of bed sleepwalking, and there's a window ledge next to my bed, mm. and I face planted. Okay, so it wasn't in the literally. Kitchen. No, no, no. Oh, I thought it, it was. was I know. I said. I started by lying to everybody oh. by saying, "Oh, I had an accident and slipped," and because I was right. pretty embarrassed. fucking embarrassed. Yeah, it should um, be because I've injured myself multiple times night terroring and sleepwalking. Right. Josh so. knows what I'm talking about because yeah. of his night terrors. It's a similar thing as we were doing some research. There, there's yeah. some kind of thing going on with me that that's the other bigger part here because okay. it's it's really scaring my fiance. I hit so hard Oof. that uh, I punctured all the way up here with my teeth. Mm. There's a big, you know, big so you woke lip. Up, so you woke up your fiance from the I the woke slam, up, obviously. she, and then she pulled me into the bathroom and got, because I was bleeding profusely Jeez. from my mouth, and I didn't wake up until I was in the bathroom sitting there. Oh, you were still out. Were I was wow. still out. Holy screaming, shit. Screaming, and I thought, and she was like trying to get me, and she's like, what's oh going on? What's going on? Poor what's Julie. going on? And I was sweating. Like yeah. it was this weird thing that my body was in shock. She thought he was this. awake though. Because she thought he was I was awake. Screaming. Yeah, she... and I was screaming and yelling because I was remember, in a lot you don't of pain. Remember don't remember it. shit. Damn. Don't wow. remember. It. I remember vaguely it happening, but I was dreaming. I was like, nice. "This is a fucked up dream." And then <laughs> so when is, she got me yeah. sitting down, I had blood all over, and and I had you know mm. ice on my thing and hit my nose, it like hit Jesus. right here. I mean, I went full face plant so into you, this so, thing. So sorry, to paint the picture, you're laying yeah. in your bed, something happens, you don't know what it is. You it just, dream. You didn't, yeah. right, you, you jet up and then the wind is like, bang. Yep. Oh, wow. Just completely Damn. face planted. What is this, is stress? What's, what's happening? I, you know, it's, I've slept walk before when I was staying in Paris doing the Star Wars play. Yeah. Uh, I had a dream where I was in the Paris streets and a car was coming at me and I jumped out of the way. Now we were Holy in shit. a, bu- we were in a uh, bunk bed situation oh. I was on the top bunk. Mm. So I leapt out of bed and flipped over and like hit the wall. Okay. It was so a dream. I'd and it say. was a dream and I've right. done this before. So you could call it stress. I mean, everybody know, you know, losing Cal. It's been yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. rough. Sure, it's been rough, and I don't know if that <laughs> is, is go, goes into it. If there's a lot of stress with work, I work all the time. I do extracurricular stuff yeah. and work and writing on on the side. Then I have You're the planning wedding planning. Wedding. So overloaded. I think all of this overloaded. Let me tell you, I think that the two and, and there's nothing you can do about it. But yeah. I think obviously with Cal and then str- planning a wedding yeah. is one of the most stressful things yeah. like ever. ever. Yeah, ever. and so. Add that all into it, I think my subconscious just went crazy, and that's what happened. Yeah. And the bigger issue now is Julie's really concerned. She is really, really worried because who knows where, like, I don't want to hurt myself again. Right. I know I can make fun of myself now because it's hysterical, but, uh, you know, yeah. So yeah. we're going to look into it. Good. We're going to look study. into it. Well, good. Look, the, Sleep study, all that kind of stuff. But look, the uh, most important thing is that you will be in the free-for-all. So that's the most yeah. important right. thing no. is, but... Me, uh, they yeah, say let that. me like let me be copacetic here for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Did you deal with stuff? I deal yeah. with this stuff all the time. Yeah. The fact that your fiance is concerned and my wife just goes and sleeps in the guest room uh, <laughs> says a lot. Uh, well, you guys have been married for a <laughs> used to it though. God, yeah. shut up. Yeah. 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 What, what, but in the beginning, uh, like, so like that in the beginning. It's also different. He's yes. getting up and oh. injuring himself, and well, you... oh, so, so have really? I multiple yeah. times. Yeah. Wow. How, yeah. Wow. I mean, I got stitches in college. I got stitches in my study abroad. Damn. Uh, okay. So. We have I sprained similar. my ankle really bad when I lived in New York. Dude, uh, how'd, you, how'd you do these things? Um, so the one in, in study abroad, we were in Switzerland skiing, and I, f- I jumped off the top bunk. My buddy said he saw it. He said, I jumped off the top bunk, I landed like Spider-Man, and I ran right into a bunk bed. Yeah. 
So it's usually like I'm running to or from something. You guys are just in a different. You guys are in a different. It's like Inception. Exactly. It's like Inception. This is exactly yes. it. Yeah. The yeah. Two exactly what happens that they say because I used to have a really bad sleepwalking problem as yeah. well. The two things wow. that they say actually help without like medication or whatever is not drinking. Mm-hmm. Which I wasn't drinking. Obviously. No wine. Yeah. No. No. Mm-hmm. We don't. We don't like. We're on wedding diet now, so oh, we I only see. we do yeah. Saturday yeah. nights. Dr- but drinking like m- kills it because yeah. now next level, and I'm sure stitches time for. Josh, mm-hmm. probably some alcohol involved. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're abroad. <laughs> and then. Yeah, I was on my study abroad and I was in college. Right. It was like a seven night a week. The thing. other one, which is annoying, is exercise. They say you literally have to like wear your body out mm. like, uh, and try to like make it so that your so, body is so exhausted that you can't. Yeah. You, your body needs to have a baby. Interesting. Rest. Have a baby. Have there, a baby. There it is. So I'll have a baby that will sleepwalk at night and get out of the crib and oh jump my. off things. No, 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 no. Why do you have a baby? Yeah. Yeah. To, to stop sleep. the night terrors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be so exhausted. I know I just have day terrors. I'm not sleeping at all. But I'm so exhausted that my body won't even get up. If, if, if I start to sleepwalk, I just move like this because yeah. I'm too exhausted to get up in the first place. Yeah, I, yeah. I developed something that is absolutely not, nothing close to dangerous as you, but definitely probably as annoying. For some reason, I started snoring. Oh. Yeah, it's because I'm oh. so I never snored. You and Ken. Yeah. I don't know what happened. It happens. It, you strike me as a snorer. But I wasn't. I have never been. Ever? Never was. You're never. one of those people who thinks they're not. No, no, no. I wasn't because because okay. your wife would tell you. Yeah. And she, what was funny about it is that it, hap- it happened, usually if it did happen at all over the last like year, is when I was like extremely exhausted. Like just like out and it was like, it was t- conked out. Yeah. And so my wife at one point when she first started dealing with it, it was like, would be like, I feel at night, bang, 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 bang in yeah. my back. And I'm like, I don't know I'm doing this, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And then, but now. Your wife and my mom go to the same school of snore, wake up. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> but now, but now, uh. now she's doing this thing to where she's like, Honey, you're you're, yeah. you're 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 sleeping, you're you're snoring, you're snoring, and then so last night That's didn't know I was doing it. She was doing the rub and everything too, and then she's like standing over me like the emperor at one point, and she's like, "You just woke up the baby," and I'm like, "All right, I'm going on the couch." Well, here's the thing. Here's what you need to do. What my dad has done, and what is it? Wait, Cody, is this Ken? Did you actually tape Ken? Ken Grace taped Ken. This is, <laughs> this is not Ken. That's okay. not Ken. Yeah. So really on a few ap- episodes of the afternoon, like yeah. maybe three weeks ago, Ken played his snoring yeah. that Grace had taped. And it is a symphonic masterpiece. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh. it hits notes that you that are like consistent. <gasps> now here's the thing. When I was in New York for the Schmodown yeah. and everything, I shared a hotel room with Ken and Kalinowski and both oh. of them. Yeah, yeah you told us snore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, brutal. I stayed with Ken, uh, Kalinowski and I stay with uh, my friend Vogel and Shannon for Comic-Con. <laughs> Comic-Con every year yeah. and it is a motherfucking chorus of snores with horrible. all those guys in yeah. the room. Kalinowski, yeah. a skinny guy always in shape, works out like crazy. Yeah. Can't believe it. Snores like Fred Flintstone. It's right. out of control. Oh. Much I don't think I could be with somebody who snores that loud. And then mm. snore? Yeah. So Never. No. I would murder somebody. <laughs> I, I, like, I have patience for a lot of but things. But not, not, no, exhibit don't, a, don't mess up my but, sleep. But, oh, yeah. I, I have like five hours a night that I can sleep. If you're snoring, I can't. Hold on one second. I'm writing down another reason for you not to have children. <laughs> sleep. Yeah. It's so, like, I would, because I'm from the same school camp, school, right. whatever, that your mom, your wife, yeah. I would push somebody off the bed. Yeah. 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 No. She's well, not, here's not so we Get told, out. We yeah. told the story on stage Sleep in, in Seattle hallway. that Ken got breathe right strips for me and not Grace, because we had to share that bed in Seattle, and I woke up after the Wednesday night, none of us really drank, so I slept soundly, I woke up, he's like, did I snore? I was like, you didn't. There was no snoring, because he would he woke yeah. me up multiple I've, times I've in shared, Arizona. I've shared hotel rooms, uh, Ken Comic Con, yeah. Never heard anything. Wow. So it, it yeah. just yeah, it must have just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. must have gotten worse. Same with me. Yeah. And I like have been my whole life. I've been a mouth sleeper. Like yeah. I sleep with my mouth open, so that I drool same. a lot. Mm. And so um, I mean, Amanda says sometimes I breathe heavy. But even in like nights of a lot of drinking where I pass out or whatever, Amanda says no snoring, just like some heavy breathing. My dad is a nose sleeper and he sleeps on his back. <laughs> right. And he got this mouth guard, oh. and it, the mouth guard changed his life because he doesn't really snore as loud. I mean, right. he still snores, that, but he's I, got a mouth guard. I'm not doing it now. Is the mouth guard like something like the football players put in? Because I could have used yeah. that the other it, night. 
it's it, yeah. it's like it's a, I, it's basically a night guard for sort of for your teeth, but it also you can has use like the this helmet thing. For people who have TMJ yeah. a lot of the time. Correct. Yeah, Julie, <laughs> but it opens up your nasal passages. What, Riley, go ahead. Last thing. no, last night as we were getting to bed, Julie starts putting pillows smart. all over <laughs> the <laughs> window. She's smart. Yeah. And she's like, we got it. And I'm like, you're baby proofing the room right now for yeah. me. Yeah, and I'm like, that's how okay. Scared she probably actually yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. was freaked out. Your and, face is gonna look like a and, hamburger by the way. And I and I was I was like I'm not going to be be able to do free for all because I couldn't talk right. at one point because I was like what the fuck is going yeah, yeah, on yeah. and then uh, I, so I, I was I was worried yeah I was very swollen and uh, but she was like is this what is this babe is it are you are you missing Cal is yeah. it that and I'm like maybe. I don't know. I right. don't know. But, you know. Well, speaking of Cal, though, but there's been a lot of art, a lot of people sending Jesus. Yeah. Then, then this is this all happened around the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a big shout out to to Paul Duncan. Uh, nice. You can check him that. out at wow. Pick Up a Painting. Look at that. He actually did the most lifelike picture I've ever awesome. seen with Cal. That's cool. Uh, like, uh, it's gorgeous. He's sending it to me. You um, should blow it up like that. That size. No, yeah. he, he. It's a huge oh, original that? painting oh, that he it. is okay. sending to me. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, so I got to thank him. He did a great time lapse uh, awesome. painting of it. If you go to his YouTube channel, but it's at Pick Up a what Painting is, on Twitter. Cool. What is that medium? Yeah. Is it charcoal or pen? Like, I, I. You know what? Paul could probably answer that better than I can. I think it's paint. Pen. Oh, it's paint. paint. It looks it's paint. If you see his video in the time lapse, it's gorgeous and it just takes shape and it's. He got my boogs. Yeah, that's he good. got the boogs. No, it looks it's, it's, beautiful. It's, it's really good. That's yeah. the yeah. face of uh, hey, I see you have peanut butter. That's so the peanut butter. butter. And great. Cal was out there for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so cool. That's a lot of a lot of things is covered thus Jeez. far you today. Know it was cool for sure. oh, what's that? It was cool. I thought so. <laughs> yeah, okay. You real, it was cool. No, it was real cool. quick though, and, oh, and this is go. hard for you. <laughs> I know, but Maybe. like, so you can train service animals. There are trained service animals that help with night terrors. Like there are PTSD yes. uh, wow. soldiers that have do uh, dogs. Yeah. My buddy Kenny, who started the Battle Buddy what, Foundation. Do they bite you when you wake up? No, they like they they like get in and they like nuscle you back oh. to sleep. Oh, so it's this. like a it's a warming kind of a thing. And uh, that's what my buddy Kenny has because he has night terrors and extreme dreams, as they say. It, it's it's interesting because I really noticed it after losing Cal, uh, how much of a stress relief he was. Uh -huh. yeah. When you just come home and you're like, what's up, buddy? And you start yeah. and you just forget everything. And that's what second wise. Yeah. energy yeah. wise and everything. And it's and that's maybe I'm not going to point to that, but that oh, it certainly was a big Julie was mentioned. A big she's thing. like, yeah. it's been a big hole, like a huge hole where you come home and you, you don't have that. So right. are you thinking about getting another one? Yeah, we Another are. Dog. We are. I've been looking, but not not very seriously. We're, we're thinking after, after the, the wedding. wedding. Yeah, yeah. After the wedding. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, look, having a it's not not as intense, but it's definitely similar to having children because you got to especially a puppy. Yeah, yeah and we God. want a puppy. I I am a puppy guy, like yeah. where I train them right then yeah, yeah, and there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they and we get that bond, and that's what I did with Cal, and he's the best this trained one, dog. This one's got to do the paw. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah I'm gonna do the paw. I'm gonna look for the night yeah. terror one uh, sleepwalking guy. The paw. One time. Can we one time bring up? You know, I was I was thinking. I haven't looked at. I haven't checked either David B or Thrawn's channel in a while. Yeah, I don't know if they have songs. I'd oh. like to see if they have. They any usually songs. tag us. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. I told you, it's, it's I like don't Banksy. See tags. Yeah. It's like Banksy. <laughs> you got to. You got to just kind of go and, and see. There's Thrawn's I don't channel. See tags. So uh, go to videos. Videos. I mean, video? is this great radio video? or oh, what? No. <laughs> just no. look at the radio. That's what we do every time. Uh, no, no, there's no, no new songs. We tried David B. If we can find video? David B. No, no. Um, <laughs> took a break. Took what a do break. they call it? Call what? What do they call it when you're fro? Because I have I have sleep no, paralysis. No is that ones. what that is? Where oh, you like you can't too. wake yeah. up, like you can't wake yeah. up, and There's your body's frozen. Brutal. Yeah. Because my girlfriend has night terrors, mm -hmm. so she's I'm oh, her she service does. dog. Because she'll start yeah. doing, and I have to like guide her back into sleep. Right. Because she'll start yelling or talking and shit, and she hasn't done this though, and that's what scares me. Yeah. Uh, Roy, if I'm having sleep paralysis while she's having night terror, I can't <clears> help her out. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, fucked. There, do it Julie did all this <laughs> research, and there's very there's a lot of disorders that affect people. Yeah, it's weird. The night um, terrors is one of them. When I have, and probably yeah, sleep yeah. paralysis. All right, look. So can we get? I want to get. Let's let's get Darina on the phone now, if possible. Have her have her, have her call in because I want to get into this whole thing that happened last night with uh, with with. Let us. me text her so yeah. she can uh, start. Yeah. So look, I'm going to set up the scenario for those who didn't tune in the last couple of days because we we actually Hi. met a Collider Live fan last night. And that was good, dude. Aaron, he, he was a nice At guy. Screening? Yeah, yeah, and he came up to us, but like he, you could tell he he's a, he's a fan of the show, obviously. But I don't think he had been listening the last couple episodes because he didn't realize why Makuga was there. Yeah. And I was and so. 
the, because it was really funny when Makuga showed up. I want to set up this whole scenario. We're sitting on the show the other day. Makuga said that he had seen the Us trailer with his lady when they went to see Captain Marvel, and he it, we watched. Then we watched the trailer. He was scared out of his mind. He said there was no way you could ever get him into that that theater, no matter what. I said, how about a dinner at Morton's? He said, okay. And <laughs> so, so then we so we decided then to go and have him sit. And what the plan was, the plan was that because it was going to be a packed theater, and you knew you can always tell with the screenings, the buzz around the screen what time to get there and yesterday I'm telling people you got the movie started at 7 I gotta get there at 6.15 it's gonna be a buzz we get there there's a line around the door apparently I pushed Roxy out of the way I didn't even know she was there um, <laughs> you and Fernandez we, we I was like right, hey guys brush right Boom. past you didn't, 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 didn't even see it <laughs> I, and it, I, you know what's so funny? That sound bite, I could actually see your face as we walked by <laughs> yeah. doing that. I, I was with a friend who didn't know you guys, and he was like, do you know them? And I was like, only every day. I, let me, only you. I have a beef with... All right, well, that, we'll, get, get, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So then, so as we'll we... So, there's oh. the, so here's, the, here's the line. We, we get in, we sit down, we get our seats. It's, it's myself and Fernandez, and I save the seat for Ellis. Okay, I save the seat for Ellis. And then Dorina walks in, and she's like, she comes walking up, and I and she's, where should I sit? And I go, in, in, and I point to the other side of the theater. I go that side. And friend goes, no, 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 don't worry about him. Sit over here with us. And I go, are you no. sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have him sit with sit with us. I go, McCook is gonna be with her. That's fine. How bad's he gonna be? Okay. <laughs> so and Copster was in the same row too, right? So then how'd you get them all in? Copster, Copster already had no, not Copster. Oh. Well, McCooka was my plus one, yeah. and then and then Dorino uh, uh, was a plus Dorino's one. on the phone. Oh, she's, she's on. Okay, I, I got you. I got you. It's Dorina's on the line, and we'll we'll get to Dorina in a second because Dorina shows up, and then because she didn't know, Dorina didn't know. She Dorina, she's like she asked me where where do you want me to, to sit, and Fernanda goes come in the row, sit down. So she sits okay. down, and we sit down, and cops are in the row, and then there's these two girls that are sitting there as well too with two open seats. So in walks oh first of all Ellis walks in, and I have the seat for him, and he goes, wait a minute. McCougar's coming? <laughs> I, I, I go, yeah, he's sitting in this row. He goes, I'm sitting in the front row. And he, and he, and he leaves. And, and I'm walking up the stairs, and he's the first person I yeah. see. He's like, listen, it's nothing against you. It's all about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then he walks. He's walking out. And I, I get it. And I said to Ellis, and I look at Ellis, and I go, Fernandez decided that he wanted Dorina and Makuga to sit in this row. And, and, and Ellis looks at him. He goes, bad move. Yeah. And, and, ta and takes off. So Roxy, Roxy walks up. And I see Roxy. She looks over and she just looks. She, she turns back. She's like, "You know who's going to be pissed? You know who's going to be pissed?" And she points to Dan Merle, who's just sitting there unexpectedly. <laughs> because he didn't know. And Dan, right behind is, Dan, I've never seen somebody get as upset as Dan does when somebody is in a screening not acting appropriately. Right. Oh, Should we yeah. have him call in because he's no, that right behind. Him? I no, have no, no idea because, how because, he was with because, it. because here's the difference though. Makuga is not acting. No, he's, he's not on his phone. He's reacting. Yeah, he, you're but right, I was right. I was picturing. The whole time screams, so yeah. I was like, "Oh no, poor Dan!" Right. So, so then, so Makuga shows up and he looks t terrified. He looks terrified. He comes and he sits down in the row. He's talking to everybody too. Well, he, I, I walked into the theater and I didn't, I couldn't see you guys. One, because I have terrible vision, and two, because I was so stressed out um, about I, the movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I hear like, "Hey, Josh," and it's Wendy, and I was like. Right. <laughs> I, didn't even say I think her friends that Wendy was sitting with were like, "Do you know that guy?" Because right. I would just like shunned her off because I just wanted to get to a seat and just like you sit just wanted there. to start and get it over. with. Yes, right? correct. So Dorina, I feel bad. That Dorina, I was a dick to so, Wendy. and you were and Dorina, you sat next to uh, to Makuga, and you were were you kind of trying to talk him off the ledge, saying it's not going to be scary, or you were just kind of doing the opposite and trying to get him more hyped up? Well, what was going on before the screening? All right, I, I got to switch ears because one of them is deaf now. Oh, okay. oh. So, oh from, from give the me screaming. a break. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Okay, first of all, I just want to thank you for taking me to the screening. I had one of the best nights of my life. Um, and also worse because Roxy was right. Holy crap. I've never felt such contradiction, co such contradicting emotions going on at the same time of pure joy and embarrassment. Right. Well, that's, well, all right, so, so. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. So, so, so as we, the, the screening the screening starts, and well, before that, Makuga turns to the the, the ladies next. Well, to yeah, you here's the thing. So, I I walked in and uh, I was you a little late. So nervous. Oh, my, yeah, just terrified. And we start talking, and you guys are like giggling and doing your thing. Which, by the way, there was a few laughs during the movie last like night. Like real laughs. Yeah, yeah, real laughs. And I was like, "Why are you idiots laughing?" Mm -hmm. Like, th I, there, there's no part of my body that could laugh during that movie. John, was not, yeah, I was yeah, enjoying the hell out of it. No, yeah, that movie was no. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so no, John, no. I, know, so I sat down. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably gonna need a water because I might start sweating, and it was getting kind of dark in there. And Mance is walking around doing his Mancy thing, right? He's the mayor. Yeah, he's, he's the, the mayor. mayor. It's fine. <laughs> and so. I go and I get a popcorn and I get like the smallest glass of water ever because apparently the arc light's not giving bottles of water. I, don't, I don't know. Oh no, I, mean, I, I asked. You got one too. That's no, what I said. Then, no, oh. I didn't get one. I, I oh. asked them about it. They said they sorry, stopped they doing didn't, it. No, they didn't pay for it. Oh, it's a they different pay pack. For this time, oh, I yeah. Oh, wow. Nice yeah, I, I okay. asked. I was like, but well, I always I, get water there. I like, see. yeah, they cheaped out a little bit. Oh, and okay, I was okay, like, oh yeah. It is what it is. All right, I gotta jump out. Okay. Bye, John. Bye, John. Always a pleasure. So, so I'm, I'm. I get down, I walk, I'm walking out of the, to go get the popcorn in the water, because I'd already sat down, I went out, because I was already stressed, I didn't want to sit there, it was too much anticipation, it was, yeah. it was palpable, so, and at least in my, you guys are all jovi and like joking around, ready, like, yeah. ah, you see this, you see this, I'm like, you guys need to shut up, so I walked out, and I see Roxy walking in with somebody, I don't know who it was, and she legitimately, it wasn't like, hey, she was like, where are you sitting? And I was like, uh, by Christian and Darina. She's like, okay, well, I'm going to sit away from them. And didn't she even introduce to me to her friend. You were nothing. walking. You were walking very quickly. Okay. You didn't be, stop. be honest, were you mean to? It was so funny, though, because it happened to everybody in the Collider family. Yeah. Everybody just looked at us and saw nice. that Christian, Mark, and I were sitting next to Josh. Right. Well, yeah. Dennis, Dennis walked, walked that's right. Dennis walked in, Dennis walked in saw my and started cracking Rossi. up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with yeah. like I'm with my best childhood friend and I'm like this is gonna ruin the movie for him. He doesn't know this guy. Like he's gonna be Josh is gonna be screaming. I understand Where are you that. Sitting? You just don't have to insult me in front of somebody I've never met before. <laughs> you cause it was insulting. You weren't like, hey, how's it going? You're like, Where are you sitting? Oh, you, I'm standing away from there. Uh, uh, like, honestly, it's kind of a dick move. Honestly, you were insulted. Insul you were insulted. Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah. I didn't think that. Yeah, it was I, like kind of a dick move. Wow. 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 No, wow. On, honestly, I'm shocked because all you talk about is I don't know that guy. You. you don't know. It like, could have been like, hey, this is my friend Josh. He screams during horror movies instead of. He knew that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he knew. He knew that. Whatever. It's fine. But, but, so then I come back. And sit down, get ready. I sit down, what? and there's two that seem to be like professional women sitting oh, yes. next to me. Okay, Hollywood Reporter. I, I don't know and who I, they and are. And I told you, I was like, Josh, maybe you should apologize in advance, and you did. And I did, and I turned to him. I said, I heard I, this. And I, I'm a, you know me, I'm a very nice person. I'm always kind of happy. I turned to him. I was like, listen, I, I want to apologize in advance. I'm a screamer during these movies, uh, and it's like it's embarrassing. And they didn't to a know what they, they were confused. And they and no, and the girl goes, oh. Okay, well, like, you sure you want to sit here? You know, like, you, you sure, like, you don't want to sit by your other friends farther away from us? And it wasn't in, like, a funny tone. She's it was being, in, like, What's see the you common next denominator here, though? I'm just curious. Like, is everyone else crazy, or is well, it... Well, I can tell you, uh, uh, Copster and his lady were really cool about it. They were, he, 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 he's, at one point, because I don't know what I'm more excited about, the, the Makuga or this. Fernandez was, we were, everybody was kind of nervous and excited to see how he was going to react at the same time because Fernandez goes, are they going to kick him out of this thing? And I said, I don't, I, I don't think so because I'll tell you this, what I am glad about, what I was wrong about is I am glad that he sat in our row because I, the other thing, and I'll let Dorina tell about her experience about sitting next to him the whole time because it's the first time she's ever been in a movie with him. Out of 100%, he was at a 20. I didn't hear him from two rows back. Which is shocking. Yeah, so Dorina, tell me about I, your I, there's experience. There's no way. I don't believe you that that was 20%. I, I, I that promise you. That was enough. <laughs> so tell, tell, that so was enough for me. Yeah, because Dorina was like actually scared during the movie at one point, and then Josh goes, ah! and she <laughs> yeah. just starts. I saw her laughing for a good forty-five seconds. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you tell tell us the no, experience? I, mean, I just, I just, I honestly, I, I think because of what Roxy had said, and you guys had kind of were like nobody wanted to sit with him with, <laughs> with us. So I'm like, how bad is this going to be? And I was kind of nervous because I wanted to. I love horror movies, so I wanted to enjoy the movie. And I was like, is he going to ruin the movie for us? He did not ruin the movie. No. Uh, he, ru he ruined the fact that I was going to get scared because I was about to get scared a couple of times. And he, I just don't know what it is, Josh. Like, you're, you you kind of, you, you do this thing where you you get bigger and bigger and you kind of sound like a screaming Roger Rabbit. <laughs> and and it's, it's just. Can you give us a, <laughs> can you give us an impression? What? Can you give us an impression? I don't think I can. No. I mean, I, it, I mean, it's like this crescendo laugh where he's just like, ah! it's, I, I, I can't. <laughs> Pretty much so, Fernandez, that's nothing. Fernandez, le, Fernandez, legit. At one point, 
Play, play one of Makuga's. We have the actual screams from the screening, but we're going to play those tomorrow because they need to be edited. Yeah, um, I, we recorded it. It just co- I didn't get it. To, I thought I sent it to Cody first thing this morning. Yeah, we'll get it and tomorrow. It, the file didn't go we'll through. We'll get it tomorrow. But, but play, play like a, a stock Makuga scream for a second. <laughs> so that happens, and Fernandez goes, was that Dorena? And I go, no, it was not. I said, no, it was not. And that I would say he probably... Were you and Fernandez having a whole conversation the whole time? Every t- w- it was a chain of laughter. Like every time he would go, because because he would also do like this dialogue that he would have. And he'd be like, "What are they doing?" <laughs> but, and like you would hear that, exactly. And, exactly. and you would hear that, and then Dorino Dorino's body would start to shake with laughter, and then it would carry over to me, and then Fernandez would be like, "Oh my god, oh my god," he'd hear Fernandez <laughs> saying that, and then you know other people the, would hear the, it. The weirdest part, though, is that there were literally scenes where nothing was happening. And Josh was just making random right. noises. Tension building. Like, yeah. There was nothing going on, and he was freaking out. It yeah. was. I was like, "What? I've never seen that before." <laughs> <laughs> anyone? Can you, you ask, know what's coming? You can know you ask what's Josh? Do me a favor, Christian. Ask Josh which of his friends called him after the movie, to make sure he was okay. Ooh, Roxy did. Right. But I think but then I texted be, Roxy, I, I just got home. I'm and not, not going to let you off the hook there. The only reason why you were super concerned about, more so is because like, ah, I didn't even hear him. Uh, so I want to make sure he was okay. Oh. Because you didn't thought I died. Well, I, you were. Well, I, you didn't I, I couldn't me, hear so you. Cool. I didn't see you, you didn't to say it. goodbye. I didn't yeah. know if you would left, but, so I called to check get, on I you. Get back, I want to get back into the Friendship. thing where, where we have like so. The, so what do the girls? What are the girls next to you? Are they like during the okay. time? You, you, so I okay. Here's the thing. When I <laughs> 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 don't hurt your face. Yeah, no. well, th- this this was fine right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> If like, <laughs> I I don't know what else is going on around Wait, me because I'm laughing? so scared. <laughs> oh, this tweet. <laughs> Sorry, just everything's coming in at once, and then yeah. the tweet and everything's yeah. just oh, funny. Gonna, well, bring I'll, that tweet up. I'll read it. We can. No, read no, it I want to bring it. I have it right yeah, on my phone it. here. Oh. So, and I, <laughs> I, I wanted I I wanted to reach out to this girl and have her call into the show because I would like to know her because she doesn't know who I am. No. and she's with the Hollywood Reporter. Let's add a little gravitas to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> you Co- Cody or Alex, see if you there it is. There it is. Yeah, right there. So, so, uh, so go ahead, uh, Makuga, before we read no, it. Yeah. So, so when I'm in these this movie, like even at the nun or that ridiculous movie Hereditary, yeah. okay, I, I put these blinders on and I have no idea what's going on because my body is so stressed out to the point where yesterday I got home and I like stretched out because I was having this cramp in my left side yeah. from like squeezing my body so tight. so nervous. And I went to bed last yeah. night and Amanda's like, are you okay? Like I was like hunched over. I was like, I don't know, my back really hurts. So I had her walk on my back this morning because I'm like, for two hours, I'm so tensed up. My body is so tensed that I, my muscles contract. It's it becomes a situation. So, and thank you for your call. And I was just messing with you yeah. about your friend. I feel bad. <laughs> it's fine. I don't no, not kidding. feel bad about it. He I, asked I, if I was nice. I said I was not. So, so I said, um, you know, uh, I I looked like with about twenty minutes left in the movie. And when I screamed a couple times, and here's the other thing: not only did that girl next to me tweet and her fr- or, and talk about her friend who like took one for the team to sit next to her, that girl sat next to me. So her friend didn't sit next to me. Oh, she, Rebecca she okay. Ford or whatever right, her right. name is sat that next is to me. That is her name. In fact, right, yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So, so this is Rebecca's tweet. Rebecca's tweet last night I saw it and I retweeted it immediately. 9.54 p.m. So she walked out and tweeted. That was yes. what she was thinking about. For <laughs> she said, shout out to Yes Kelsey for sitting next to the very large, debatable, grown man who, I've lost some weight. All right, who screamed like a 14-year-old girl throughout the screening of us. Like even during the not scary parts, it was very confusing. I saw that and to me that made the Morton's thing worth it. <laughs> Can I tell you how many issues I have with this tweet? Okay, okay good. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I, please, please, please break it down. Break it down. Are going to be hallway Roxy? Well, let's hear it. Let's hear That's it. your new alter ego. Hall, hallway <laughs> Roxy. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, it's uh, I have 50 issues. It's not like we were at a fan screening where right. nobody would ever find this. We're at a critic screening. He's obviously going to see it. Like, <laughs> we all know each other. I'm not saying you know Rebecca, but you knew right. you know a person Rebecca knows. We all know each other. Right. Like, I, Yes, we have a mayor, and yes, it's Mance. Yes, but other than that, we all know each other. So this person, I knew six people when I walked that. in. Right Second away. Second of all, uh, and obviously this is me being a little uh, social justice warrior, but for a woman to now tweet that a man sounds like a fourteen-year-old girl in a screening, toxic is, femininity is, is disrespectful. <laughs> it is. It's just if she wanted to say you sound like a fourteen-year-old boy or fourteen-year-old like, child, a fourteen-year-old child, yeah. but but the the amount of comments about 
what that means like why are 14 year old girls more scared than did boys? you see on the instagram because I, t- I sent the tweet on instagram the first comment was uh from andrew santino friend of the show what's wrong with screaming like a girl, a girl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah well did you guys see those commercials the like a girl commercials yeah, and what yeah, it means yeah, now yeah, refining yeah. so that's stupid as crap okay and then also when you're looking at this she refers to you as a very large grown man not very large which, uh, doesn't very sound large, yeah, maybe she meant man. it as a compliment but it doesn't sound like a compliment so now she's describing your size and your size should make You're a, a difference fatty. for yeah. and just everything about this i was like rebecca ford shame on you uh, no. <laughs> shame on you i got i got a kid to, to add to your point roxy i've never heard a 14 year old girl scream that way so. yeah <laughs> so it's not even accurate it inaccurate no no no, no. Doreen, Doreen referred to him as roger rabbit yeah uh, yeah, yeah well, here's, it, l- let me I mean, yeah. th- and thank you for defending me on that one, Roxy. And I, I would honestly love for Rebecca Ford to come in, call in or whatever because I think it's hysterical. I but, think it's really funny. So the, here's the other two parts of this. So there's a part in the third act when nobody should scream, and I screamed. Okay, right. and 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 I I hear. <sighs> <laughs> And I, and is I it Rebecca t- Ford or is it or Yes friend. Kelsey? I think it was Rebecca Ford. Go to Yes Rebe- Kelsey. Did she tweet out anything about it? I don't it think too? so. She she responded and said, I'm a survivor. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought it was great. Because <laughs> really she yeah. she she poked fun. Which it was yeah. hysterical, right? I thought yeah. it was amazing. I like the tweets. Wait, Josh, but also tell them about okay, so guys, the people in front of us. Oh, I oh felt exactly. so bad for them. Why? What happened to Well, I I mean I was yelling. I mean, not yelling, but I was screaming throughout the movie. Darina, did they not both turn around and evil eye the shit out of me after the movie? They like, like, huff- like at the end. I don't. I think you might have ruined the movie for them. I feel kind of bad for them. Yeah, I don't you feel know, bad for me, but I feel bad for them. See that that I'll take issue with because I, I've I've sat it's next to It's a horror movie. First, and even that he wasn't doing it. He, I'm telling you, I, I wasn't promise singing you, the Mary Poppins it, it songs was, at full no, volume. He was screaming during the moments. It was twenty. He was. Just I'm telling you, it was twenty percent. It was this not. Is, it was not bad. This is why I love going to horror movies. Yeah. I hope to get a Josh Bakuga yeah. in the audience. And, and to be fair, we're that's too. so fun. He also got a lot of laughs. Yeah, too. I'm in, sure. In, in a way to where because people, yeah. and not in a way like, oh, the guy's trying to get laughs. It was like he would go, ah! yeah. and you would, and, <laughs> and you would hear the crowd of, like yeah. a can a can would fall, and he'd go, ah! and even even Cobster who loves, and you know, oh, go ahead, and, sorry, Drina. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. The other thing too is I've been, as you guys, I've been to a lot of critic screening, and I feel like they're usually with with fun movies like this. They're not as fun. Like the, the, the audience isn't as fun. As yeah, they're, they're a little stuffy. It was, it was a, he was a can. So he, was can yeah. yeah, he was a can of Red Bull. Yeah, he was a can of Red Bull. Yeah, in our row, exactly. he was. Uh, my thing about the people in front of you, Darina said it. She said, listen, did was I scared at the scary parts? No, because I was laughing at right. Josh being scared. And I think a lot of people go to this want to be scared. Right. If you go to a horror movie, you want to be scared. So I don't know if you necessarily want to laugh as much as See, you do. Sure, but that's also me. not his fault, though. Here's, here's the thing fault. for me. And, well, it is his no, fault. No, hold on. It's how, oh. he, it's how he reacts. Let me just right, let me put which this. Is his, I, whose fault is that? My brother. Now, can I can I huh. let me can I just defend myself a little bit? Please. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to defend you too. Thank you, and I appreciate it. You're all trying to defend me I, and yeah. Roxy it too. No, I, I'm, I'm defending him against Rebecca Ford. Right. <laughs> but just not not for coming to the screening. You did not you no, did not want not him there last night. It's not about coming to the screening. I, and I'm not actually embarrassed of my friend Josh. I just don't know if I my experience is best if he's there. Right. So I'm going okay. to so basically what you're saying is I have to take him to Morton's again to sit him next to you at it too. You have to take <gasps> me to Morton's. Him to Morton's. Why would that help why me? Don't we, why don't why we why don't we why don't we go a little less expensive for the it two screening and we all go to Outback Steakhouse? Yes. <laughs> I like Outback. I'm in, I want to watch it too with you. You've okay. never been? I, I want to do that. Did you hear what she just said? What's that? She's never been to the Olive Garden. I hear it's got unlimited breadsticks. <sighs> it's to Olive the Olive Garden. Garden. Why don't we do Olive Garden? Garden? I love it, that idea. All right, it too. You got to sit next to him at Olive Garden. I want to get one of these bottomless pasta bowls. Yeah. Oh, that's easy too. It's no, no, only like 99. unlimited. Just order yeah. it. If you guys, there's like gold bowls that they send to people that then you just bring your bowl and they fill it for you because you're a special person. No one called me out for the idiot thing I said. I said. I said, yeah, okay, we'll do that. It too, you gotta sit next to him at the Olive Garden. What? Yeah, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, give me it too if you sit next yeah. to him at the Olive yeah. Garden. Eat the breadsticks, right. moron. So, so, you fucking moron. Here's the thing too, is, is Cobster and his girlfriend, 
uh, Amber Sweetheart cups are the best. He he's like giggling over there, and I thought he'd be upset that we were in the same row. Afterwards, he texted me after he saw oh, this he was tweet. Pissed. And he was pissed about the tweet, and then he's, he's like, "Dude, you yes. weren't even that bad." In, yes. in fact, no, he in fact, you made Amber and my bad. experience better. We talked about it on the car ride home. Yeah, and I was like, "Great." That's what I'm okay. saying. He he's a horror guy. He no, gets because, it. Because here's, because but wait, hold on, hold on. It wasn't jarring. It wasn't yeah. jarring. It, yeah. it flowed into it flowed into it's the part screams. of yes. the experience. You go to horror movies where you want people to scream and get that out. It really is tension. I was worried about sitting in the row with them and yeah. and I and and I was I actually it enhanced my experience I too. think sure. we boycott Rebecca Ford nah, 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 nah it's fine yeah. so oh, everybody's I'm, got, I'm everybody's got their stance. funny thing to say <laughs> taking a stance no she's Stay fine stance the person that should Rebecca be most Ford. offended by it is more offended by Roxy dissing me in the hallway like, hallway I'm, 13, Roxy. like I'm a 14 year old girl yeah. not in the popular crowd she's okay, hallway Roxy get out of the way she's hallway Roxy what do you say she's hallway Roxy what do you do hallway Roxy get the fuck out of the way so, Get the fuck good. out my way. <laughs> no, here's the thing. You said it was my fault, right? You said it's my fault. Mm-hmm. Of the, how, you said it was your brother's okay, fault. Okay, no, no, it's fine. My brother used to just torture me. I'm scared of dark places, mostly because he'd like lock me in the basement and laugh about it. Anyway, so. <laughs> Okay, I love my brother. He's amazing. Yeah, Mark, he's, he's, I, I, I won't say any more, but part of this movie must have really affected it, you. It, it, it's scary. Yeah. This right. whole movie... It, 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 anyway. Oh, can't wait. What I'm saying is, as a human being, I don't know how people don't react that like way. I react. Because I don't... It's not... I'm not acting. I'm not putting on a show. You're not. Doing, this is you a really natural okay. reaction. It's not so, Because if wait, I was putting on a I, show, I yeah. would have overreacted to all the scary yeah. scenes. I saw, a comment, I saw a comment on the YouTube channel a little while ago. Which, oh, no. It was when you were reviewing the, the It trailer. And they go... Oh, uh, this is this thing with Kuga being scary movies. It's such stick. It isn't. No. It yeah. re- the first time, I'll be honest. First time, I was like, "This is him trying to be funny." It it, it really isn't. It yeah. really I, isn't. I feel you. So when I eat cheese, I legitimately <laughs> spit. It, I spit oh. it out. Okay. Because it tastes disgusting. I don't understand how somebody can like it. It it tastes like mold and poop in my mouth. So poop. I feel how you feel like when you don't understand how other people can't react the way you react. But that is on me. Right. I'm not saying it's your fault like you're doing it on purpose. I'm saying yeah. it's not my fault. Real, real quick. Right. Hey, Doreen, I just wanted to, because I, I got another caller calling in, but I wanted to thank you last night for, uh, Thanks, for taking Tarina, one for, for the team. Friend. And, um, and yeah, we'll see, you on, we'll see you on Thursday. Yeah, see you guys tomorrow, and thank you so much. And Josh, I hope I at least was a little nice to you yesterday. You were great. It was, it was very nice. Are you trying to you. one-up me? Yeah, or? I think so. I think she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later, Karina. All right. Let me know. You, let me know when we get our next caller in, please, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll talk to that person. As you well. see, you guys are friends now, or what's the level? Well, here's Where the funny part. At? I don't know if that thread. First of all, the Rebecca Ford. I don't think she knew what can of worms she was opening when no, she, she tweeted know, that she out. She didn't know what the, the title I wanted. I think like somebody t- retweeted it. Either it was you, it was probably you. I retweeted. It. So you retweeted it, and then Cobbs retweeted it, and Dennis retweeted it, and people started tagging me and all this stuff. And uh, no. poor Rebecca Ford. Yeah. There, we got another poor caller. Poor Rebecca right. Ford. Right. Yeah, we have a very very special guest calling in who, she got the who, who, was, brunt who, of the was, who was part of this whole uh, fiasco last night. Caller, can you uh, can you let us know what you thought about the experience of Josh McCuga at the uh, at the screening last night? Well, yeah, my experience was a little different because I was sitting in the front row of the theater far away <laughs> from Josh and the carnage. And I Josh. can confirm you could hear Josh McCuga in the front <laughs> row of the earthquake. <laughs> Mark Ellis, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Ellis. Why couldn't I hear up, him Ellis? two rows behind? I don't, I don't know. Buddy. I don't know, but you, you did you did hear him, and, and did you were you shaking your head uh, disapproving when you heard it, or did it blend into the reactions of the movie? Well, it certainly didn't blend into to the reactions <laughs> of the movie. Um, it, it, it accentuated for me, but it, it wasn't a detriment to the viewing what? experience for me personally because I made the logical decision to go far away from Josh right. at the beginning of the screening. Because right. like, as soon as... I went up there and like you know we exchanged pleasantries and all that stuff and then when I found out that that I guess Christian had made the you know I, I don't the word boneheaded is strong but <laughs> to invite McCook <laughs> the word boneheaded is strong uh, you son of a bitch um, I, I I will I will push back on that we got about a half an hour worth of great conversation so far out of this bit so uh, uh, go ahead my friend go ahead and. <laughs> does Makuga get like? Does he win some sort of prize? We're going to Morton's. Like, We're going to Morton's. He's taking me to Morton's. What? Yeah. yeah. You're taking. 
You're taking it to Morton? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Christian, you and I have to have a long talk about our finances. <laughs> uh, I mean, and here's the thing that Christian didn't know, Mark, is that according to this tweet, I'm a very large grown man, meaning I can eat a lot of Morton. Did you see? Did you see the tweet by Rebecca Ford? Um, I saw a lot of tweets last night. It was great. Which, she just she wrote she can you bring it up again? I'm gonna read I'll read it to I Ellis. Can, I'll read it to Ellis. It's really good. There it is. It's right here. <clears throat> uh, she said okay. this shout shout out to Yes Kelsey for sitting next to the very large grown man who screamed oh, yeah. a, who screamed like a fourteen year old girl throughout the screening of us. Uh, like even not during the scary parts. It was very confusing. <laughs> was yeah, I would say that's an for- accurate assessment of the situation. <laughs> Forty one retweets. Forty one retweets. Every time you say it I get more pissed. You get more pissed. But like she a has, fourteen she has year no, old girl? What does that mean? She has more comments than retweets and more likes on any one tweet she's put out in a long time. Hashtag Collider Live. Yeah. Hashtag that's the show. Yeah. Um, well, good. I think, that's a, I think that's an accurate assessment. And, and, and if I can just say this to Josh, like, like I'm proud of him for, for stepping up and making another attempt. I just I feel like I'm Josh's offensive coordinator when he goes to see horror movies. And, yeah. and I, feel like he's, I feel like he's a freshman quarterback who is, who, who is all pumped up and had a great week of practice. And then he runs into the game and just shits the bed. Because <laughs> this is what I told Josh going into it. I was like, okay, dude, here's a little horror movie tip for you, okay? When, when something scary comes on the screen, all you have to do, don't close your eyes, just look at the far corner of the screen. So that way your eyes aren't emblazoned with the image of the clown or blood or anything. Advice. You, yeah, you're not closing your eyes. No, no, but he. Not I, don't, I think it all shuts down, though, Mark. Corner. Mark, I think it shuts down because what I what I notice what he does during the movie is he start, he's starting to anticipate like when the moments are coming because like as someone walks yeah. down a hallway or something, he curls himself up into a ball. He he tries to put his hands over his face, and then he realizes he can't do it because he, he knows that he's got to be there to watch it. Yeah. So he takes his fa- face off, and then something doesn't happen where he thinks it's going to happen. He goes, ah! and then he stops, and then he goes, "Why are you going in there?" And then something else happens, and something else moves, and then. And when something really scary happens, it's like it's, it's bottled up inside and it just explodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Josh yeah. coils up like a panther in the jungle yeah. ready to strike a kill. <laughs> right. Or right. Like, like one of those toy cars, where like you wind back and then you release it and then yeah. it just shoots across the room. Well yeah. said. That's what he's like. That's but what he's it, like. But I can say this, that it is all from... It's all from a place of honesty. Like, oh, he's yeah. not milking it for the reaction nope. or for the bit. Like, this is an actual problem that this grown adult man has. Correct, and, and that's and why. I, that's why if it was if it was just someone, he I, earned a thing. Yeah, I would never send someone willingly to a screening to disrupt the screening. Uh, because hey, you know, I just want you to make noises and stuff mm-hmm. like that. No, no, no. I will. I will send you there to see you ne- react and get. Reactions like we did out of Rebecca Ford because to me that's funny mm. and we get a good conversation out of it. I, I know this doesn't. Josh. I know that this doesn't appeal to Mark Cyrox. Uh, I know this doesn't appeal to Mark, but I, I I got out and I called Amanda and she goes, "How'd it go?" And I said, "Uh, not the best." And she goes, "Was it seafood tower worthy <laughs> at Morton's? You know they got the seafood tower at the crab oh, yeah. legs." <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, there are points that will stick out." And I did have a decent amount of night terrors last night from what I nice. understand. Good for so. you. Did you like the movie? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No. Um, well, Alice, you know what? Let me ask you this before we let you go here, too. What did, what did you think of the film? What did you think of us? Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be in the studio to tape our review of it. I already um, taped it. But I uh, I loved it. You loved I it? I would have given it, or I, do, I will give it, five out of five. Wow. Because I thought it was fantastic mm. start to finish. I thought every every scare, every frame was just note perfect. I think Jordan Peele's a master storyteller. The, the performances were great. It was funny. Like, the humor in it was great. Um, Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke were just marvelous. The I will say that. They were great. duration of the film, and I had a blast. I, I This is one of those ones. Like, I never thought I'd love a movie as much as Creed 2. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but now that I get to go back and go see this movie in a theater this weekend, like, I can't wait to look at every frame of this film. Ellis, you tweeted and you said that your uh, creepo twin also gave it a five out of five, and I thought you were talking about Christian. <laughs> she's like, so she's I came like, in, I'm like, Christian, you thought it was a five out of five? She goes, did you love it? And I go, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. And she's like, wait, I thought you said five out of five. And I was like, no, that's Ellis. She's like, that's part of the movie, Roxy. <laughs> Roxy. Uh, I, yeah. well, I was there. Even yeah. in the creepy underground tunnels, Roxy's still lost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I have. Yeah, I, well, no, well. 
clear this up right now is that, that Christian is not my creepo twin. Christian is is either the husband or the wife in this relationship, nice. depending on what day it is. I, I was this close to tagging Topher Grace in it <laughs> with the creepo twin. Content, That's amazing. Oh, incredible. incredible. Well, listen, speaking of which, uh, I can I can say there's a possibility. It's not confirmed, right? Not confirmed. Not confirmed that uh, your doppelganger, Topher Grace, might be on next week. Yeah. So what day? Um, oh wow! Really? Well, it'll be like a f- Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think yeah, my first on. question to Topher yeah. Grace will be like, "Do you remember that time we were at Chipotle and our friend we stopped you?" For I want to get that picture. <laughs> I want to get that picture and bring yeah. it up. When yeah. we, but if you're if you're I'll around, you, wow! I'll, I'll send you the picture. But I also want you to ask him not only if he remembers it, but him and I were in line together and we ordered the exact same. No, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Truth. I'm hoping you could come in for the interview. Um, well, it, it's like time cop. The same matter no. can't occupy no, the same can't. space at okay. the same time. So I don't sleep? want to cause some sort of weird okay. time rift continuum. in the time continuum. Or, 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 or you, now that you don't have to be here, you don't get out of bed afternoon. <laughs> Dude, uh, you know what I'm doing right now? What's that? I'm, I'm sitting on my recliner in my right. sweat watching ESPN, and it right. feels marvelous. That's the, okay, that's, that's the, oh, good! There it is. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the that's the real answer. All right, listen, Mark. Thank you for uh, for joining us, and we'll see you this Saturday, man. Free for all. Who, oh yeah, I'll ask you the same question. So, you know, because Mark does not know the lineup yet. So, if you had, f- you know, there's going to be 40 competitors. You don't know all the numbers. If you had to pick one person that you think is going to walk away as the winner of this thing, who do you got? Um, that's a great question. First of all, I'm very excited about the, uh, the free for all because tickets are almost sold out for it. Yeah, like 30 Um, tickets left. And I just, I love being on that stage, uh, with you and seeing all the fans and the free for all, that's going to be a new animal for us live. Yep. Like doing something like that. So, um, it, you can't discount, and again, I don't know the why, so I might be saying names that aren't actually in it. Um, but you can't discount what, what Viviani has done yeah. in a free for all environment. You can't discount that Mark Andreco cleared maybe the most famous right. uh, table in the free for all. Uh, I know that Rachel Cushing is in it, and so she would. Pr- I know Mark Riley is in it, and so. Yeah, but I don't, I'm not good at free for all. <laughs> either one of those. He sells himself court, short, he's going to win it this year. I, 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 there's something special about, like, and again, I don't know what the numbers are, but if there's 40 competitors, what if at number 39, Brett Sheridan walks out and just and just catches fire late. I think this could go to Brett Sheridan. Brett Sheridan. Oh my God! Yeah. Well, he's working. He's working the event. He's he's actually working the event. Oh, yeah. he's gonna, he he's, leaves the he's, camera. He's, he's so, hanging he pictures sh- on the wall of no, the Globe yeah. Theater. No, he, he's the, he's a cameraman for, no. for this one. But um. Okay, well, make sure that Brett uh, keeps everything in focus this time. Will do. All right, listen, Mark, thank you so much. We'll see you on Saturday at the Globe Theater, downtown L.A., 2 p.m., and also get Mar- get tickets for Mark's show on April 12th in Chicago, markellislive.com. And, uh, yeah, Mark, thank you so much, and we'll see you uh, We'll see you next time. All right, love all you guys. Joshua, I'm proud of you. We're Thanks, working. Buddy. We're working on it, okay? <laughs> all right. Thanks, buddy. All right, there he goes, Mark Ellis. So, look, uh, we, got, we have a lot of movie stories to talk about today, but... One of the movies that's coming out on Netflix is The Dirt, and we have two actors coming in uh, in in just a second here at eleven o'clock. Douglas Booth, who plays Nikki Six, and you know him from Game of Thrones, Eon Rion as as did I say it wrong? Yeah, yeah. it's really hard. I I got corrected every time I How said it on TV talk. I believe it's Eon Rion. I think that's closer than what I did. Yeah. So, at, who, Rion. who plays Mick Mars, and it is directed by Jeff Tremaine. We're going to talk to them afterwards about Motley Crue, uh, about just in general this 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 crazy story that's coming out. So, when we're back, actors from the dirt, quite a lot. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've had some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And, look, we 
We want to hear from you. So we want you to listen. We want you to watch. If you're a sports fan, even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far out as we'll go, uh, or cricket. But uh, maybe in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's certainly a possibility. But for right now, Collider Sports is there for you. Take a look at it, take a watch, and let us know what you think. Oh, hi, guys. It's Perry here, and I am going to tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out. We talk about what we hope is coming out. We do fantasy casting of things that should exist. Why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things. And every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics by in print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out. And we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital. I'll forgive you. As long as you're paying for your comics. It's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and we to can catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed, and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media what topics are burning up social media that's what we do on collider sports time i'm joined by my top 10 co-host matt nost me and him we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about nfl the major league baseball playoffs nhl and the nba which is starting up soon we're going to talk about that we also get into ufc stuff college football all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports, we're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon.
All right, we are back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And as we await, we are going to talk to to the lead actors from The Dirt. And I can't wait to because we're all Molly Crew fans. Huge. Coog has read the the book twice. Did you see my shirt? We did. We, and we were and we were talking to him a little bit before, uh, right before we went back on the air. Yeah. Very chill guys. Yeah. Very very awesome. just relaxed and and it's 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 going to be a lot of fun to talk to them yeah. because this movie to me, I saw the trailer. It just, it, it is everything I wanted from a Motley Crue movie as far as just craziness. You think that's one. And for Bohemian Rhapsody, you guys know how much I love that movie. Right, right. And a lot of people's complaints with that movie is that it's a little, it's a little light. Mm. They don't really go into all of it. This movie looks like it explores all of it. Right. And I can't wait to really get to the bottom of it with these guys and it's, see. It's one of those, uh, when I read The Dirt, and it, it, came, it, it came out at a time when I just moved to L.A., and uh, it was one of those those books where I was like, I'm going, I'm going to go to the Whiskey Go Go. I'm going to the Viper Room. I'm going to these places because I'd watched behind the music, the, you right. know, the Motley Crue behind the music. And then when the Dirt came out, and they each write chapters of the book. Uh, here, yes. we yeah. here we go. Here we go. Let's do All it. All right, let do, do the honors, gents, my friend. Gents, you take it. Guys. Go ahead. <laughs> so you want to sit there? All right, so Roxy, you ready to get going? What do you mean? I didn't, know if you're ready. I didn't look ready. No, please, guys, Darn please ready. put, put the hands on. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us here today on the on the show. As we um, we were talking a little bit in the green room there, I uh, back in two thousand like five to like two thousand eight, I was working with Eric Olson, uh, who's a producer of this movie, and and he used to listen to he was listening to Motley Crue all the time. Huge fan. And so when he told me that he was working on this movie, I was not surprised in the slightest. And then I saw the trailer. The trailer came out, and, and I was a big fan of Bohemian Rhapsody when it came out. I liked it. But I, one of the big criticisms of that film was that it was a little lighter on. Maybe they didn't go into it. I see this trailer. I don't feel that way at all. It feels like it goes into all everything about it. And would you guys agree? Yeah, that, wait till you see the film. It gets yeah. a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, the trailer like, is light compared the to light. the movie. Yeah, yeah. Wow. it was important for them, I think, as a band, that they didn't want the story to be sort of made too shiny and clean. They wanted it to be very honest and yeah. And he says warts, warts and all. all. Yeah. yeah, that's what he says. Yeah, I mean, so so tell me about it because were you guys as familiar with with the band? Did you did you listen to it a lot or 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 maybe if not, did, there was a lot of research that went into it, listening to it, learning about it, reading the book. Yeah, well, yeah, reading the book was the first thing to do, and then. Um, yeah, then listening to a lot of the tunes and learning how to play them on right. the guitar. And, uh, did you play before? Yeah, oh, I did, did okay. yeah. Yeah, so, but in you know, very, very different style, and I'm nowhere near as good as Mick Mars on the guitar. So, <laughs> but it was uh, a massive help. It would have been a lot, because Mick's such a great guitar player, yeah. and you were, you were trying to, you, you spent hours and hours and hours perfecting those riffs, and not yeah. the riffs, what do you call those, the solos? The solos, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all really difficult stuff, and he's got such a unique style, and it was really important to kind of try and be able to replicate that and make yeah. it look as authentic as possible. When you guys read the what read the book for the first time, did you did you believe it? Because I read the book the first time and it's, I I told you guys before we started rolling like this is one of those books where you give it to a friend and you say read this, yeah. right? It's like a pay it forward. And I was like this the, the amount of debauchery that that went on Almost unbelievable, but so believable at the time that you you like it's one of those urban legends and you want to hold on to that belief. Yeah, but what, what, one of the most entertaining parts for me about the book is how the stories contradict each other because mm -hmm. each chapter is dedicated to one member of the band and it's yeah. like written first person, um, and then they kind of they kind of contradict each other as it goes along. But that's just that thing when you've taken that many drugs over that <laughs> many, <laughs> over that many right, right. years no one can quite remember right. totally, um, totally. what happened yeah. well yeah so and I know that you so you, you had, I, we had heard that you had met Nicky before yeah. you had not had a chance to did, did you meet him at the premiere Mick yes. yeah yeah that was the first time on the red carpet you did yeah. okay, how did that go it was great yeah it was kind of crazy and a lot of photographers shouting and you know it was all you know that kind of there's a really lovely picture of you and him when oh, you're both looking at each other yeah, oh yeah oh, that's cool really nice shot. yeah so it was really cool and he yeah he's he seems very happy with the the movie, and I think the whole band do. You know, is well. That's the trick, right? Because a lot of times you hear sometimes where the 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 band will say that's not a proper representation, that didn't come off the way. But it seems like you got that they're pretty happy with the film. Yeah, I mean, we were. Nikki and Tommy yesterday and at the rainbow. And they're <laughs> really the rainbow the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this good. is awesome. But they yeah, they just seem they're so excited about it and they, they um and that's kind of I mean, it kind of feels like job jobs done well yeah. if they, if they and, think yeah. that. And they were the they were the perfect amount of involved. They never interfered. Like even from the first time I met Nikki I turned up at his house, he was so in I was I was 
a bit nervous, to be honest, because, I mean, he has such a reputation. You know, you read the book, you're like, he's an intense guy. <laughs> yeah, but right. he's, he's such a changed man now, and he, he's so warm and inviting. And um, he would, you know, do everything from just text 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 me guitar like little tuitions on how to how to hold his bass right and like things like that and like Mick made you a t-shirt and yeah. they like um that he used to wear back in the day and they were the perfect amount of involved they gave you everything that you needed and but not trying to like, did they show up on it. set a lot no no they no. they came to while we were doing band practice we had like a four week band That's practice crazy. together yeah. and they came and gave us basically lessons as well. Yeah. Um, but then they kind of let us, they trust us to just get on with it and they trusted the filmmakers. And obviously Eric Olsen, the producer, yeah. one of the biggest Motley Crue fans ever. ever. They, they knew they were in good hands and Jeff Tremaine, again, like led brilliantly. Was that part of the audition process? Was the, was the musical aspect of it? Or? Uh, well, I mean, they, I met with Jeff uh, before I was sort of auditioning or anything right. in LA and... Uh, but he, so he knew I could play the guitar, so I guess that probably helped. <laughs> <laughs> I, heard, I heard that uh, Machine Gun Kelly was brought in like seven or nine times. Was the audition process that long for you guys as well? It, um, I remember I made a tape years ago, like when the movie was at Focus Features, and I actually made it for Tommy Lee. Um, and it went from there to doing a Skype with... I, I was in Poland doing a movie, and I, I was Skyped with... Jeff and Eric, and I remember being like, oh, I'm going to get a beer out of the minibar and try and look more cool than my brother. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I, and then I did that Skype, and then they then they said they were interested in me playing Tommy, and then eventually I, they actually, we, would you actually consider reading for Nikki? We think you could be good for Nikki, and I did that, and then and the rest was history. Well, when it comes to, there's two things, actually. The first thing is, did you guys, had you guys met each other, like all you guys as a, as a group beforehand? Or, or We must have met We've each met. other. Yeah, We've met, yeah. We've met, but we, but didn't, know we didn't know each other very well. Yeah. Yeah. We were never friendly with each because other. That, <laughs> right, well, that's, why would you want to be? Why would you yeah. want to be? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, you first thing, how can you trust this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your work. Uh, but uh, but no, but when, when you, but when you, uh, but when you are meeting with each other, because one of the things you got to, it's got to be believable. It's got to be like, no, these guys, they're, our, our brotherhood, but also it's like all the insanity that that ensued. Did you find yourselves a get caught up in a lot of the? Was there some partying? Was there some craziness? Was there some fights? Like because that sometimes helps for the performances, or otherwise you just you know you just leave it. Uh, it we, where the camera's going. Well, I think it's rare to get so much time together as as, as a group of actors before you film. Um, so we had four weeks in uh, New Orleans. We got there. Mardi Gras was happening. Nice. We had oh, a, wow. Yeah. yeah, so we were like learning these tunes together, going to Mardi Gras, having a great time. And we very quickly struck up a really uh, great friendship and connection and chemistry. And I think that's one of the great things about the movie is that you really feel that this is a group of guys going through this crazy time and having a great time and a lot of fun, which we kind of were in, in real life too. Yeah. And, and that was exactly a year ago then? Y yeah, yeah, Paddy, I remember, because I remember we went out for Paddy's Day, and yeah. Paddy's Day was Sunday, right? Did you, was there um, a night here in L.A., cameras not rolling, that you guys just raged Sunset Strip style? Like, hit the go-go, hit the Viper Room, went to the Rainbow, <laughs> went to yeah. the Get caught up in that yeah, mindset, because yeah. Because I was saying, when I first moved here is when the dirt basically came out. I read the dirt, and I was just like, screw it. I went yeah. to the go-go, yeah, I went yeah. to Viper Room, <laughs> I got crazy on Sunset Strip one night, thinking I was Molly Crew. Obviously not. I, I remember we went, we, uh, when we screened the movie for the first time, you was, you were... Um, looking, he just had a baby. Congratulations! He had he had a kid, but we screened it for the first time in LA, and um, we went straight from the screening room to the Rainbow, and then to the Roxy, and then everything just gets a bit of a blur. Yeah. 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 As, awesome. as it should, yeah. as, it's, <laughs> as it should. But you know, and it's it's so again because what I guess that well, first thing, did you guys get a chance to actually play music with any of the band? Like as far as like just you jam know, out, jam yeah. out. No, uh, no, no. We played, we played for, for them, them, which is kind of in like that's really gotta be intimidating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they oh, just shit. sat in this weird yeah. little room, and we, you know, we're all doing all our stuff. What song did you play? Uh, uh, we did a live, few. We did live wire. We did uh, shout the devil. Shout the devil. Damn, take me to the top. But I was surreal. I was so nervous, my legs were shaking. Yeah, man. But, but was that because you had big heels? We had massive <laughs> heels. <laughs> right, right. During big the shower, the de uh, devil days, they had these like big platform mm -hmm. heels. So we had these heels, and these were these ones were too too small for me. So I kept feeling like I was going to fall forwards. Yeah. And I have like Nikki plays this like big bass. Um, and my legs were shaking like bam. What did they really say? Nervous. You perform and then you finish. They, they, they clap. They, 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 they clapped and they um, they were just so excited. I think most of it's on film actually. Netflix came and filmed most of it, and wow. um, 
And then they just kind of gave us tuitions and Tommy got sure, down behind them. Oh, yeah, Tommy played. Tommy, started, the, Tommy just started jamming and that was pretty cool. cool. So there's no, like, intended, obviously, why would they? But as far as, like, there was, like, I mean, like Gene, Gene Simmons, every meet Gene is, like, an intimidating mm -hmm. character. And he's not, from, I've met him, he's not very inviting right away, too. <laughs> but you would assume the, guy, the guys are playing you. You're going to be inviting to, did they, did they, was there ever an intimidating Feeling no, meeting these guys? Not feel, definitely no, not no. given by them. Okay, just no, just good. the fact that you're playing an icon like that, that right. is yeah. intimidating, but no. Right. Yeah. And it's again you play but like you said, you're playing their songs, you're 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 doing that you want you when you want to impress them, obviously. But when you guys see the movie and you know because a lot of, sometimes a lot of times performers are very critical of themselves. Some but when you see it and you know obviously there's all this pressure on you, you satisfy with, with everything that came out? Yeah. Yeah. I, am, I, am. I think there's a couple of times where it cuts to me on the guitar and I'm and I know that I'm not playing that bit right. uh, but it's just an editing thing and you know it was just probably a really cool shot that fitted in but I, don't know, I just wanted and obviously I wanted more of my hands in it uh, <laughs> to but, show you, know, you can rock it out yeah yeah, yeah yeah but I mean you know it's kind of obviously you Did, leave that to the professionals right isn't it? Is there a was so you know was there a guitarist that inspired you uh, that wasn't say Mick or somebody else that you know growing up whatever wherever you um, guys were Yeah, I mean I, obviously there was you know there's the obvious Jimi Hendrix yes. and Clapton and people like that, but then I kind of play slightly more. I mean I used to play in a lot of punk bands when I was younger, but then nice. as I've got older, I've mellowed out a little bit. <laughs> now it's like nice gentle, you know finger picking and uh, <laughs> nice little song so when i got uh asked to play mick then it was like right i need a i need an electric guitar and an amplifier and uh i'm gonna piss off my neighbors <laughs> Deep, yeah well that's a good excuse though yeah. why yeah. are you playing i'm in molly yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, right exactly no a lot of people are drawing comparisons between Bohemian Rhapsody and this just because probably the timeline of this coming out so close to that. Did you guys see Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, I, I, I saw it on the plane over, yeah. <laughs> what did you guys think of it? Do you, do you feel like it's similar in tone to this movie or completely I different? I think tonally it's completely different. Have you seen it? I have um, seen it. Um, totally completely I'll different. Uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> What's that? Quick it's like I'll step back. Okay, <laughs> carry on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's yeah. I mean, it's the same in the structure. It's telling a story of a band from from its formation, um, you know, and a bit through the ups and downs a bit. Um, but ours, ours is. I'm, I'm not sure where where they got their story from. It's not based on a book. It was kind. Of, I'm not sure who wrote that screenplay. Um, I think the film's great, by the way. Um, but then, uh, I think our our film. It's very true to the dirt in many ways. Yeah. Um, this one seems way more raw. Yeah, yeah, it feels raw. And I think yeah. we didn't have any, like, you know, like, you know, Freddie Merck, there was like one shot of like drugs on a table once at like one moment, like one moment that was right. Really, but like, uh, like us, I think they just wanted to like paint it. It's like Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> Yeah, right. there's a lot of there's a lot more stuff. Well, in the because movie. I, to me, that's cool. that's one. And again, because I did love Bohemian Rhapsody, but I didn't necessarily want. I, I people compare it. To, sometimes say like it's a behind the music type movie. I like that about it. Mm -hmm. But for the dirt, I want exactly what you're talking about. To where it's just like at times, yeah, it does feel like Scarface. It's because that that's to me, Motley Crue but, was like the epitome of what the, the '80s rock star was. It was just craziness. And that was the point of the book, The Dirt, was there was so like so much detail in the amount of drugs that they took and right. and, and drinking that they did. That if you didn't show that in the movie, it, it would just, feel it, like you did yeah. it, it, it wasn't, Yeah, it wasn't the same book. And, was, right. and, and, and yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Now I remember it was, it was really about like how they created that each song, each like what kind of instruments they use. What it was that this was more. I think this is more about the life behind the music right. rather than the music. It's like more goes into the honest detail about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I did want to ask also as far as uh, when you're on when you're on set and you go there because sometimes icebreakers come in. When, like that's why I asked if you guys had known each other too. And icebreakers sometimes. Do you do a lot? Were a lot of people asking you about your role on Game of Thrones when you're talking as far as to break the ice? Because it's one of the most iconic roles. I loved your role, your work, and it, it was it was incredible. Nice. You're the most terrifying person I've ever met, seen in my life. <laughs> uh, but uh, because it's, 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 yeah, I'm sure you get that. In a good way. I'm a terrifying <laughs> person in real life. Yeah, yeah. But he's, I, have, I haven't seen I have I haven't seen it. I, I, so I haven't seen this, and everyone says this, and he's just like genuinely the nicest guy on the planet. Have you so, not seen so, the role yet? No. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. oh my god. Dude. Well, that, I was yeah. we, before we started rolling. I wanted because I I told you that Twitter destroyed. Me because every time I tried to say your name, Awan Rayon, did I get it right? It's not bad, yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> say it fast see, like Awan. Awan Rayon. It's, 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 say, it's, can you say it for me yeah. so that I don't sound like such an ass? Awan yeah. Rayon. 
Yeah. If one Try a, Try Uwan yeah. Rayon. I don't have Uwan Rayon. Rayon. Yeah. Uwan Rayon. Uwan Rayon. Okay. Took me a couple of months. Say my name, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. That's a, I'm yeah. trying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's and, and so like what, what I was getting into is because because it was such an iconic role and it was and for ex- that exact role he doesn't know you that way and sometimes you know actors do get sometimes they think a role will define who they are as people. And you're obviously not this madman. <laughs> Very nice, nice dad. Uh, but, but but when you go in there and you have these conversations, do people ask you right away or they they're not necessarily even you know it's work and it's just a role. Yeah, I guess you end up sort of talking about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it wasn't. It kind of I don't know. I don't feel like it defines me. And uh, yeah, it's just a character I played, and I always try to play different roles. So yeah, yeah that's why it's nice in this movie to play a completely different character yeah. and mix so different, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but he's kind of like the I don't know the quieter, wiser sort of member of the band and. You know, it's kind of nice to do that. That's why I'm also another reason why I'm looking forward to seeing this because of being able to see the work that you've been that you've done and just following your career to see you play such a different character is one of the intriguing things about this. But also, you know, meeting uh, Nikki because, you, like you said, he's not th- this way now. He's changed a lot too. Mm-hmm. But you've got to reconnect to that. You've got to do that too. And that's got to be intimidating in, in a certain way. It's just. He, you know, he's gone past that. Yeah. So for him now, he knows he's going to see it again, and he knows that, that he's got to go back to being that. Is that something that's yeah, super it, challenging? Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember the first time we went to meet him, and Jeff was there, and Eric was there, and we yeah. went to his like big old house in Calabasas, his proper rock and roll house. Um, <laughs> and then he uh, he he was so lovely sitting there drinking tea, and Jeff like the first thing he said when he got back in the car, just just remember that's not what he's like in our movie, okay? <laughs> I was right. like, yeah, I know, I know, I understand. But he was like, so he was like, you know, that's not the guy you're going to be playing. Right. You know, because um, you can't help with the first time you meet the person you're going to play and just like studying everything. But Jeff was like, look, he was a very different person back sure. then. You've got to find, you got to reconnect to that. And he gave me um, a copy of The Heroin Diaries. Um, and uh, which actually, I remember if we went straight from there and we went to the, I think to the Rainbow and I may have lost that copy in the Rainbow somewhere. <laughs> so it's probably behind the, you know, but behind the chair somewhere. Uh, but no, I read The Heroin Diaries and um, that like really maps out minute by minute what he was going through yeah. in those moments of psychosis and when he was like really at his, at his, Sort of worst. At, at his worst, yeah. yeah. But I want to go back to something you just said, though, too, because even though they said obviously that's not the guy that you're going to play, but there is something, though. Eventually, he gets there. The character that you're playing, he gets there. So there's something you've connected. You know that that, that human being that you met, that's in there. So you have you have to bring some of that into oh, even co- this of, crazy of madman. Of, of course, yeah. of course. You know his 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 heart and his soul, and you can even see it while he's promoting the film and all the work he's doing promoting and stuff. He still is very much that. You know he's he. He is uh, a showman. The, he's a showman and yeah. and a creative force, and you know the heart of the band, and, and yeah. he really is, still is that. It is, is yeah. that person. Was there a part? Because I know Mick uh, had his health troubles with the bone um, ankylosing yeah. spondylitis. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I I remember reading in the dirt how he was trying to hide that he they thought he was drinking water on stage, and he was drinking water bottles full of vodka. Mm-hmm. Was was that something that was hard for you to like to? F- I mean, because that's a it's a weird thing to play the the bone disorder. I say it again. Ankylosing spondylitis. Yeah, it's, so it's, can I mean, you it's say a, that one? No, <laughs> um, just check. But it's basically the, the the calcification of your bones. Correct. They all yeah. kind of go together. It kind of all starts to fuse and yeah. And right. It, but he describes it really well. It's like quick drying cement, filling the inside of your spine, Jeez. slowly pulling you down to the ground. And I think. You know, for me as an actor, I mean, that's just it's like, right, okay, that's such a wonderful imagery. Um, and then, yeah, I sort of tried to bring that into it, but obviously not make it all about that because I think that's one of the great things about him, how he's dealt to, to you know, to cope with, with such a debilitating mm-hmm. um, disease, which is, you know, what makes him such an amazing man that he achieved so much um, with having something so difficult to live with and, and, um, and managed to rock. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was kind of trying to do that, but not overdo it. But just it's part of does the that, character. Does that affect the way that you play music when you're when you're playing it? Also, because you got to have that, you know, kind of in the back of your mind as well. Yeah, but I think that's one of the things that Jeff was saying to me. You know, he kind of Mick walks in and he's you know kind of hobbling in, and then he picks up a guitar and he's like, oh. just, <laughs> just takes over his body. Yeah, yeah. So I think that really, you know, but, but yeah, I guess you have to think about, it, especially la- the later on when you see us do the live stuff. Yeah, it's affecting him more, and he's moving less, and he's kind of more rooted to the spot. Well, what speak- was ahead, the most surprising thing that you guys learned, either about Mick and Nikki or the band in general, that you were not expecting to find out on this journey? Ooh. 
Well, the first thing that came to my head was that they just d- d- survived. How yeah. did this? How did <laughs> they survive? That's the most surprising thing. Yeah. When you thing. read the book, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're like, how did they? How did they get here? Um, and I don't know. The, the one of the loveliest things that happened was that after Nikki and Tommy came to set um, and saw us and saw all of the. Um, so I think they came when we were doing like camera tests at the beginning and checking out all the props and the guitars and all the looks and stuff. And they came, they were so inspired by everything they saw that they went back and actually, it was the first time they'd seen each other in I think two years. Damn. And then they went back and they got together. And now they're like, they've obviously got back together and started recording music again. So it was. That's cool. So that, that, that you know, that's the, that's the coolest thing, I guess. You that, caused it's a been reunion a, between them? Yeah, that it's just been, a, it's the coolest thing. It's been a healing process for all of them. And I went and was, uh, I was went with them to the NASCAR race the other day. And that was the in first Fontana. Time. In Fontana, yeah. I love that they've become I'm your pal. So yeah. That is the yeah. coolest well, we were the story gra- we were, ever. We were the grand marshals. We were like the grand marshals of the race with them there. Yeah. And it was the first time they'd actually all been together at the same time since 2015 or something. Wow. And it was amazing to see them there. And I, I remember overhearing Nikki say that he thought it was a, you know, Vin- Vince was like, it's, you know, this is weird, man. Us all being together. And uh, Nikki said, it's actually really healing. So, yeah. What do you predict for their future? Do you see them making a. a well, didn't they sign a con- what, yeah, what they is they signed a contract? contract what that yeah. is. What did the, what Saying that they'll never play again live, maybe. I don't know. But they've recorded again. Why would they sign that contract? Did they, did I they think they sold, sold them, them. Did they sell the. Ne- did they s- Sell the rights to. My, I don't know what it, what it was. I think it's that, oh, um, that it was that in order to, so that they don't. Well, in, they didn't want to sort of do another reunion tour, so they just sort of went right. This is it, and we're signing a contract here that we're never going to play again. I think. Yeah, like maybe that, but, just um, to make me cooler. That's <laughs> yeah, not enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we don't get. To no, that we don't. Stage. We don't get. To did that. you guys ever? Did you? Because. I'm kind of one of those like live music junkies right. and I watch a ton of like YouTube videos and stuff. Did you guys go back and watch some of those just grainy footage of you know yeah. Tommy Lee all flipping of up digit? All of them. Yeah. So, yeah, we, isn't it just like the most time. fun you can watch? Yeah, because obviously we, we had to watch a lot of those early gigs and yeah. um um to try and get, you know, all of us find some moves and stuff so we could all then because we were reproducing essentially the stage the, performance. Yeah, and then yeah. the music video for Looks That Kill. And stuff like that. So we really had to study. We had all a big, that. we had a big, massive screen in our rehearsal room where sometimes we would like be doing it and playing the actual gig to try and get it as close as possible to, yeah. to what um, they were doing. Guys, I'm super excited for the movie. Again, it's called The Dirt, and it streams on Netflix. It's March 22nd. That's on Friday, everybody. Yeah. So make sure you check it so out. But one soon. another question I had before I let you guys go here too is, um, so like Roxy had mentioned, Tommy Lee played by Machine Gun Kelly in in, in this film. Was the stuff going on? Because he's a, he's like a he's a big star as well too. He's inside of this inside the music industry. Was the stuff going on with Eminem? Was that during the filming of this, or was that after you guys had wrapped? Oh, that was that was after. It was yeah. after you wrapped. Okay, too, because like when when all that was going down too, he was really pushed into the forefront. And you talk about a guy that it, I mean, you look generations of what. The Motley Crue, and now you look at the the hip hop genre, and he's he's a really good actor too. By the way, man, I interviewed yeah, him for yeah. Sundance. He's a really good actor. Yeah, he's so good in this movie. Yeah, he I can't really wait to see him too. But let's say because you talk, you see, those are two different personas. I mean, that is, you've really got to be able to switch out of what he does for when he's doing hip hop into what he's doing here. So how was working with him? And it was great. Yeah. He has such an incredible energy, and I think as soon as Jeff met him, he was like, he needs to be in this movie. And I think he was originally going to just cast him as a. As Nikki's dealer or something, and then <laughs> and then and it just eventually became clear that he was Tommy. He was Tommy Lee, and also I think you're right. Like to come from that place, which is like a very hard place of the, you know, what what do you call it? Like hip hop and the the rap, having rap battles with Eminem. But to be able to have like to take away your pride and sort of spray off every single one of your tattoos every day and then run down the hall in a g-string you know as tommy lee <laughs> things like tommy lee did like it takes a lot you know yeah. it's hard i find that hard but for him coming from that world that shows that he's really committed to whatever he's doing yeah. whether it's the music or the acting he like commits fully it's really cool well, yeah. guys thank you so much for joining us here today uh just let you guys know once again it is the dirt it releases friday march 22nd on netflix watch it i'll be watching it for sure that's my weekend <laughs> i'll tell you that <laughs> um guys thanks again please thank join you. us again thanks for having and us. we will be back after the break we're about all that news that we just brought up beforehand to Cloud Live. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? 
it's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself. We have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are, even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, we've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps from myself and John Roca, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, that's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey guys, Perry here to remind you to tune in for Collider Movie Talk every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. PT live. We are live. We talk about movies. We answer your live Twitter questions. It's so much fun. We talk about everything from box office to all your favorite superhero movies. We talk about horror on a good day for me. And who knows, maybe even a spoonerism will happen. I don't know. That's what happens when you watch Collider 2 v Mock, right? Are you going to watch? You better watch. Go watch now. What's up, Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, we have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love. And most importantly, we don't read any books because... TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the Collider Podcast channel and the Collider TV Talk feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends to tell their friends, and before you know it, it's a pyramid scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider personalities all the time right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the Force be with you. Welcome back, everybody. Collider Live. Those guys were cool. I had a, I had a fun time talking to them. And I, I was already excited for the dirt, but I'm even more excited I'm now. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty excited for that movie. Inception? Oh, the music. That's not Inception. Interstellar. Interstellar! Tom Zimmer. Jesus. You were right as far as the Nolan stuff went. Oh! Yeah, because that's that's because yeah. we've got some news. They we've got were some awesome. news. Mm. I'm going to tell you about some news. <laughs> um, a lot of news happening in the in the world of movies. Where's that pen? Where you, oh, you I, dude, I stole uh, it. He, he, so when you were you had wanted me to introduce them, and I was like, you, you bailed on. I know, it. I did. Wait, that was and ridiculous, Josh. You threw Christian under the bus so hard in that moment. Do you know why? Because oh, like before, I was he was like I was like so I could bash on Twitter all the time about pronouncing your name right, and he said it to me, and I was like, I'm not gonna be able to say it. <laughs> and okay, this is the conversation. I'm glad you brought this up because this was the conversation. I said, I know, I'm sorry. I brought up. I apologize. I got to tell you. Yeah, so my, go my, what I was gonna because I said. 
said, there's no I'm I'm I JT level bad sometimes when it comes to names. So I was, so he and Josh was saying, oh, I've been working on it hard, getting the guy's name down too. And I was like, okay, so we go. We, we because have, I thought it was saying it right so all along. So we're having a So this is the conversation. I go, Josh, you want to do the intro? I'll bring you in. You you do. He's like, yeah, I got it. I'm like, you're gonna do? He's like, yeah, I'm gonna bring it up. So I so on air, I say, Josh, it was you, all you happening want, so fast. You want to introduce him? He goes, nah, you do it. <laughs> I'm like, what? I heard it, and then instead of doing it, Christian just didn't. I just didn't do anything. And then we just didn't introduce him. And I was going to step in at some point, and then I was like, you know what? (laughs) I'm going to let it go. You just let it go? Well, because uh, you had already said, and people know who they are. Yeah, we already said, like I said, I said Douglas Booth, and I said Iwan Real. Iwan Real. Iwan Real. Iwan Real. The way he says it, he says it so fast. I can't make that sound. No, because he's Welsh. It's Welsh. Iwan Real. It's like, I just feel it. For me, when I'm sitting to both those guys, listening to them talk, I'm just like, I need to change my entire vocabulary. Yeah. Like at one point, he sits back and he goes, "All right, carry on." And I'm like, "Why can't I say that?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I can't yeah, say yeah. "carry on." It's like yeah. a fucking asshole. I can't, carry on. I, he does it. He works. He's fucking the yeah, best. <laughs> he's really good. I wish that I could make the sound he made. <laughs> how are all? How are all? Not even close. <laughs> but how am I supposed to get? I. He's only going to get bigger and bigger and be oh. in more things. I've got to yeah. figure out a way to say it. Sweet guy too. Very, very uh-huh. just calm and cool. And they were both great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was awesome. By the way, I didn't know it. Yeah. about him kind of going into you just very uh, uh, look both those guys uh, really sold that movie to me even though I didn't need to be sold the movie but even really sold it to me to where I you can tell that they 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 were they were geeking out to yeah. like to play them so I asked yeah. them off air um, yeah. uh, how is it and they were like it's really good nice it's yeah. But you're gonna really like it. Well, it's funny because I mentioned my buddy Eric Olson, who produced the movie, and he showed up. He was he actually he when we went outside, he was there, and he told me he's like, "Have you heard anything about it yet?" And I was I was like, "Not yet," because I you know haven't had a chance. And he's like, "I'm I'm excited. People are really are really raving about it." I've heard it. a couple of people have seen it, and they are loving it. Awesome, good Can't for wait. him. Just a couple. Eric's a fucking solid producer, man. He's been he's been producing stuff for a long time. I worked I worked for him. I worked with him. Um, and he's he's a hustler. And you know when he wants to. Who's this? What's Fernandez. Oh, oh, oh my is. God. Uh-oh, what yeah. happened? The one man who's allowed to walk in whenever yeah, he wants. Only, yeah. only the one guy that can actually come in and, and turn do that on. I turned oh, it I, off. Can I tell you I know why? I, I'm going to tell you I know why. It's about Josh. No, it's not. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you I know exactly it's about why. about Molly? Kirk? No, he's going to be mad at me. No, 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 no. First of all, it is about Josh. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought, did you so get a chance? Did you get a chance to meet? I did, but I was listening. I was listening to the show, okay, in the morning, and I felt like I needed to get my piece in. So... Like I don't want to interrupt whatever you guys are no, just riffing were, about. Yeah, we're just talking about that. We had we had the actors on. We're talking about the dirt. But no, you're good. You want to talk about what yeah. happened last night? I actually want to give Josh a lot of credit. Yay! Hey, for okay. last night. Uh, okay. okay. Thanks, man. Okay. And, and I don't know if this speaks to the quality of the horror that we sat through last night. <laughs> Rebecca Ford's tweets. Rebecca Ford's tweets. But you actually were fairly contained. Yeah, I mean, twenty percent. I said twenty percent out of hundred. I, I think twenty percent is accurate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I also want to defend Roxy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, because <laughs> because I was walking with Josh in the alleged moment of oh, rudeness. Oh, you were you were with him. Okay, yeah. I was with him. Oh, so give us that's what? right. You were. Give with us some clarity. I was going to. Can't go to make it up. Oh, wait, I totally yeah. forgot. Let's hear the inside scoop. Yeah. yeah. So I'm walking out with Josh. Josh yes, is like, yes. Yo, I'm going to get some water. I'm like, I'll go with you. Right, so you know, so I can you know go vape in the bathroom. <laughs> right, yeah, right. As one then, does at the arc. Right, 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 right. In there. Right. And then we run into Roxy, and Roxy's just like, "Hey, where are you guys sitting?" I thought she wanted to get into the whole mix. You know, I didn't see it as rude or anything. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I, but here's the thing. I, I believe I, 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 when Josh you? says it, it's hard for me because sometimes I don't know my tone. It's part of being from Boston where I think I'm being nice. But if Josh says right. I was mean, I'm like, maybe. I'm going I'm 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 to sit on the outside of here, too. Okay. Because, right, right. because a lot of times, like you just said, you're vaping in the bathroom. You're not paying attention <laughs> to this shit. I can, I can tell you right now that I, when I saw Roxy as she was coming up to see us, she she looked at me and she's like where are you over there you know who's gonna be pissed he's gonna be pissed i, I was mean, nervous about dan she, she was she was in the, she it was, was probably like okay, somewhere in the middle i it, would say in the middle. i was probably somewhere in the middle yes. i wasn't trying to as josh said insult him right. <laughs> but, i definitely but wasn't like let me insult josh you did however you did a little you bit him a little bit a little you, bit you did you didn't introduce either one That's of us no, to your true. childhood you guys, best friend right. you guys were walking so <laughs> fast first of all yeah. you and christian had already pushed by me he didn't even believe well, yeah. i knew you guys we went right past roxy by the way 
here's the best part though. Is that's true. If we're walking by and Fernanda's like, who is that? I was like, I don't know, probably one of Roxy's friends from Boston. Like that's, <laughs> she's always <laughs> coming to the theaters with nobody yeah. I've ever met before. Right. That's true. I use these as my social night out. Oh. I take somebody new to every screening. Right. Yeah. Not not like a date, just a friend. No, no, a yeah. friend. Yeah. I've I've known this kid since I was literally five years old. Right. Not that there's he, anything wrong with taking a date, but it's only just just pals. Uh, I feel like taking no? a date to a little, screening. Yeah, it's a little much because it's me saying, Look why don't I cool introduce I you to all of my coworkers? That's a lot. Yeah, right. It's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, because everybody starts coming up. Who's this fucking guy? Yeah. Right, right, right. And even Roka wanted to sit with my friend George and I um, for a second when we were down. Tell him to go fuck beer. himself. And Roka's trying to like, <laughs> maybe, he's trying to like sign to me like, you guys to get you together. Uh, right, right. That's, that's, like, first, that's exactly where he's at. Of course. Everybody, right. I'm sure. But like, just so everybody knows. Tell I him to go fart different himself. Different person to every screening. Right. Never and, slept with any of them. Well, listen, Except for Ben. Let's, let's get to... Um, and that's not during slowdown <laughs> hours. No. Right. No. Let, let's talk a little bit about the movie for for you. We, we, huh. we, what? Why did you say that? The Schmodown hours? Yeah. Because that's what you said on the show. You said you didn't get any sex during the Schmodown. Oh, I thought you were referring to a different time. Oh. What, what's the other time? <laughs> oh. Geez. What happened? Well, uh, <laughs> too late now. <laughs> too late what? now. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly know because you brought it up. You don't uh, want to talk about it? You want to move away from it? Uh, Roxy. It, Roxy, move Roxy, away, Roxy, 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 It's like, uh, it's like, uh, what's it, the Motley Crue was going to say, it's like Monty Python. Yeah. Run away, run yeah. away. Yeah. Right. Correct. Um, <laughs> Fernandez, what you, so what were your overall thoughts briefly on, uh, on us? Um, can we talk about it? Is it like embargo? You just can't give spoils. Okay. Spoils? Spoilers. Spoilers. I thought. Don't give the spoils. Carry on. Carry on. I think, um, um. Fucking idiots. His directing style has uh, really evolved. Yeah, the uh, film is far more stylistic than Get Out mm. from a pure sort of point of view directorial thing. The music supervision was incredible. Yeah, music was pretty good. Um, it was really, really, really well crafted movie. the The script didn't land with me necessarily, you know. But I don't want to get into too many plot details yeah, or anything, yeah. or go deep diving like Riley and I do about Star Wars. <laughs> we are. I think you but, and I are on the same page. But I mean, look, I can hear I'm, I, I'm very glad that he's out there making movies. Me too. Because the cast it, was great, by the way. The cast, cast was, was great, great, but it, it was really well directed. Mm -hmm, I agree. Really well directed, and the music supervision was out of this world. I literally, I, 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 you know, after we left, we were both raving about it. Yeah, um, yeah. we compared it to like Stanley Kubrick, like the way Kubrick mm. uses music. In he film. he uses as, as much of a character as any of the actors. Yeah, it's uh, great. It's not just. It doesn't seem like a music video. It seems like it's just. It just. It, it's infused yeah. with the story, and that I liked. But I agree with you that there were parts of the story for me that really worked well in the, in the beginning. I was locked in, and then there's certain things that happened. I just had so many questions in a way that I was like, mm, I, yeah. I, I don't want to have. I think you said it best. To be honest, I think after Thank we you. left there, you summed it up really well, and that it's it's a little far fetched. It's a little far fetched. It makes you make a lot of leaps totally. of it, faith, yeah. and the suspension of disbelief suffers because yeah, of it. Totally. It took me a minute to say to myself while <coughs> watching, yeah. "This is not realistic." Okay. Anyway, you, you know, know, like I, it was far fetched, but a lot of Get Out was far fetched. Yeah, but there's. I thought it was but a little this, more clever. I, get I think out that Get fun. Out had a, a bigger social impact, I and I and I appreciated yeah. what it was saying more. This didn't have that same thing. It didn't have those same, like, I would vote for Obama a third time kind of lines right. mm -hmm. uh, that really resonated with me because this was a straight-up horror sure. movie. But I think that if you stay stuck on that it's far-fetched, you're going to have a hard time with no, it. No, 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 no. But it wasn't, it wasn't, it, it is so yes, much yes, more. Yes, yes, No, no, no. As far as far-fetched, you don't know why I'm coming Okay, why am I coming from, why am I saying it's far-fetched? I think you're saying it's far-fetched because of what, I don't want to give away. But there's stuff inside of this as far as because there are certain movies that are very unrealistic that aren't that, that, that still makes sense that inside of their rules. I'm saying that the rules themselves that were set inside of this world, they just weren't explained as well to me as far as like I, there was. There were inconsistencies. Yeah. And I, I just, believe I just I left going again yes. without giving spoilers saying, OK, but if this happened. Then why didn't you just do this? Because and it's and it's not one of these things like well you're supposed to figure it out for yourself. Like I, it's not like right. the end of Inception with the spinning thing. Does it ever stop? That's a different. That's a yeah. totally different scenario. That could be but, Inception's far fetched. But but you know, the big takeaway I think is that Peel has gotten better. Oh, absolutely, mm. he's gotten better. The directing as a director. was great. Yeah, and the music was great. It's a point. Yeah, it's you know. it's a must. And I will say this, even though and you can see my score in the review, but I, but. 
even though I have criticisms over it, it's a must see in the theater. I think it is a movie that you yeah. should absolutely watch. You should and, follow the And every career. theater needs a Josh. I okay? see. And, you know, that's what I say. And a Roxy. I, I love that real. theatrical well, experience. Well, don't, hey, don't, don't leave yet because okay. the next topic you okay. can actually, you okay. can actually chime in. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually, like, why did I come in? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. You're going you to want to talk about this because Mark and, uh, and Riley, uh, Fernandez and Riley at, uh, host Rule of Two. Now, Fernandez may or may not be at Celebration, doesn't know yet, but news that's coming out that's not confirmed yet, it is a big rumor, it mm -hmm. is a big rumor right now, and uh, speaking of Game of Thrones, Benioff and Weiss, who are doing the next series of films, the inside rumor is that they're going to start shooting when, Riley? Uh, this thing? fall. This fall, and then it is indeed... Uh, in the Old Republic area, because it spans back anywhere between three to a thousand, three hundred to a thousand years before. Is this a, a report from Star Wars Newsnet? Newsnet, yeah. Okay, Star, Star Wars, Wars Newsnet. Net. Their source told them uh, it's not the Ryan Johnson trilogy. It's yeah. the Game of Thrones guy's first movie set during the Old Republic. Disney wants to open up the Star Wars timeline and appeal more Game of Thrones style audience. Yeah. And the timeline is hundreds of years prior to the Skywalker. Right. So think almost Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. I was going to say, what is the Old Republic? Okay, so basically, <laughs> you know what it is? To, to, yeah. no, wait, to, to explain it to you, Josh? Yeah. To, it's to, an honest question, it is, right? It it is. Is. To, to explain it to you, it's the Roman times of Star Wars. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and it is, and except, you know, in the Roman times of Star Wars, there were still lightsabers, except mm -hmm. how in Star Wars... That you know, there are two Sith. There can only be two th Sith that, it, that exist, right? A, mm -hmm. a master and apprentice. Depending on when they make this, at their time, there was an army of Sith. There were an mm -hmm. army of Jedi. What I believe will happen is you're going to see the formation of the Jedi. I believe you'll see the formation of the Sith. And I think that'll spawn into this whole... Christian, you've been yeah. saying this for a little while <clears throat> yeah. now. And I'm curious because, yes, this is now more public. But yeah. are your inside sources saying this as well? I don't... Um, now, I, all I'll say, all I'll say is that I think that this makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'll just say things it makes here, a lot of sense. Here's a prediction. Yeah, Pain. Rion is in it. Yeah, that's Could interesting. It's a good Rion. prediction. He'd be great at it. Shit balls. He won Rion. You wanted to ask Could him. Ask him. Shit balls. Yeah, missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. We'll, we'll have a little chat about that later. <laughs> <laughs> missed opportunity. I think he'll be in it. I mean, this kid was an incredible. I He's already got the Marvel tie. Incredible in humans. He's in Inhumans. Marvel, I, Disney. The last time I was as mad Marvel at myself <laughs> at this is when I decided to have nice. one fucking double-double <laughs> instead of those two, and I knew I needed two. What a fucking imbecile I am to not ask that, that question. This is the third time today you've called my friend Christian an imbecile, I know. and I don't appreciate it's, it. Well, it's true. Mm. He's an asshole. It, at least well, you're not a very to... large, grown man. Oh, you <laughs> idiot. That's, he's he's still he'd be, a, he'd be a very interesting young Bane. Truth. Uh, he couldn't play Bane. Because Bane, Bane's bald. Bane, 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 no, Bane's like six foot five. Bane's <laughs> yeah. like oh, right, 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 right. Six, six five foot, and yeah. Jack. He'd well, be, be, be a great Jedi. Really good, yeah. Be a great Jedi. I don't know. He'd be good. He'd be good. Give me a Sith Lord. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. Like, wow. We've already seen that role from him in Game of Thrones. I'd love to see him go to the light side. Can we call him? We actually blew this. We did. Come back. Come back. Let me test the level. See if they'll turn around in the rain to come answer Star Wars. If they come back and I and do I still botch the intro again? Hey, this is Dig Dave and Brett. So, so how do you pronounce his name? I Ewan. Don't do this. Ewan Rayon. Ewan Rayon. Ewan Rayon. You gotta say it like it's almost like you say Ewan. Ewan. No, you gotta say the same. Not Ewan. That's steak sauce. Ewan Rayon. Ewan Rayon. We blew it. However you say his name, the guy is incredibly talented. He's great, yeah, super talented. talented. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay, so this this to me, like I said, it makes sense. It is something that I've been saying for like I think a year since they've been uh, announced that this is something that it just it, it fits into everything we want to see from them. Plus the fact, what is the smart play for them at this point? is that you don't have to deal with expectations of worrying about the Skywalkers, worrying about any of this stuff, that you're setting up a brand new Solid. era, brand new characters in a, in a place that, oh, this is what the rules were a thousand years ago? Or yeah, and like for me, the thing that gets me the most excited about it, and uh, if you play any of the old Republic games, or if you've read some of those old books, um, it is a time of Jedi Knights and Sith fighting against each right. other. Yeah. It, is, it is this civil war of the Force, and you can't get away from it. It's not like we can go back to this time and there's no lightsaber fights for four movies and you're still waiting for the lightsaber right, fight. Right. So none of those excuses are there. The force, the dark side, the evil, the right. temptation. Well, we don't the, know yet. You, you know, know, all well, that stuff has to be in there. It has to be. You know what I would like to be called for the rest of this show? 
Leon Lett. <laughs> Leon Lett. <laughs> I would like to be called you Leon Lett. had the ball Lett. right there. And, you and I it. ran into the fucking other end zone. Yeah. 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 Let man. me ask you a question because we talked about it on Rula 2. <laughs> where there's smoke, there's yourself. fire, right? Yeah. I, I'm now looking at celebrations. Could they finally announce this? You were thinking they weren't. And that's what's uh, part and, of this. Yeah, to get ahead they're going to do the movie. Right. They're, they're going to do the movie, and we're going to get an announcement, maybe a title. Maybe. I don't think they were planning on it, but maybe to get ahead of it now because the, the reports are starting to get out, too. Could I'd be. like to see, you know, who making Star Wars, uh, they, they've got a really good source. Because a lot of their stuff, I mean, they're 95% of the time, they're, they're, they're dead on. I'd like to see where they're coming from. What, what, are, they, what are they saying? Well, there's this is one source, and they've tried to get it confirmed from yeah. a second source. So they're, they are kind of classifying as like, listen, it's just one for now, but they've been. And very no, I, reni- I, I, reliable. I, I think they nailed it. I think that's exactly what it is for sure. Yeah. Um, I think there'll be more details that come out. Just, just to know. go on that riff for a second, if Benioff and Weiss, like most creators, tend to collaborate with the same people, they yeah. get a certain language with them, right? Mm-hmm. Which other folks from Game of Thrones do you think could make the leap? Jon Snow, because uh, because the look, even though it is yeah. Game of Thrones in in Star Wars, and maybe they're like, oh, he's been in a ray. He has made it pretty public that he wants to be in Star Wars, and he's told Amelia Clark that, and like he wants to be in. If there's ever if there's ever a doorway for him to be, be in Star Wars, it's now. This is it. I'd also like, call. I'd great also call. like to see the mountain in. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for sure, you know, any of those guys. One that, day, Arya, I think she could make the jump. Absolutely. It's, it's um, funny. You think of all the, the actors really now that are in there. Obviously, um, uh, Kira, who uh, I can't get Sophie her name Turner. Turner. Yeah. Sophie Tuner. Turner. Sophie Turner. Turner. Yeah. No, no, no. Who plays uh, Daenerys? What, I can't uh, Amelia think Clark. of her. Amelia, Amelia Clark. Lena Thank Thank Well, she was already Lena. in. You're saying? Yeah, <laughs> because, no, I'm, this is what I'm saying. Gwendolyn Christie, we right. already, they're in a Star Wars movie. Uh, you know, Amelia Kira, Clark. The yeah. Amelia Clark. That's going to be a Schmodown question I miss. Yeah. Um, but of all the actors there, who's going to take over? And I think Kit Harrington is. I think he's next. I mean, he's perfect. one of the big ones. And also Ned Stark uh, as, as well. You know, Ned Stark, uh, Sean, Sean, Bean. Sean, Bean. Sean Bean. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Pedro Pascal, obviously. Right. They're, they're picking up a lot of, a, a so, lot of them. It too. makes sense. Yeah, you yeah. should. Uh, all right, Mark, thank you very much yeah, for. And, and like something to, not to cut you off, but something that the listeners don't know. Now that I'm sitting behind Riley, Uh-oh. great head how, of hair. How full the back of his head! Like a helmet. Yeah, it's the like back's as big as the front. It's just yeah. it's unbelievable. No, it can, really is majestic. I understand. You could, you yeah, could, you could cut off 20 percent of his hair, and, and for all the balding fucks <laughs> in this office, you could put it on, and that's the end. <laughs> what of do you guys need? Right. Yeah, how much hair do you need? Shut up, the trick. <laughs> all right, listen. Uh, that's that, that's Thank the man himself, the owner of uh, Collider, Mark Fernandez, host of Rule of Two. Make sure tweet at his ass and get him at Star Wars Celebration. He needs to be there. Thanks for backing me up, buddy. All right, so let's let's get to a couple of things because we have about 15 minutes or oh, 10 yeah. minutes uh let's talk about the first things first let's talk about the stranger things trailer mm. loved it loved, loved it. it pretty great loved, I loved it, it. Although, didn't love it didn't I, see it no i saw it okay here's the thing i think i'm like i'm trending down on stranger things because season two wasn't as season good as season two one did, i didn't love I, yeah. I i honestly didn't even really like it that much okay and i i wanted to obviously loved it because i really really enjoyed s- season one is as, as far as like even with the barb plot hole right um this one i, I plot do hole. It, it, they just ignore Bar- her. barb dies just and she's gone don't, don't. Don't don't mansplain me about Barb. <laughs> I know what happened, my girl Barb. <laughs> Just as for Barb, <laughs> I remember. I, I want to love. She came on uh, Riverdale, and that was just yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I want to I want to love because I, I really want to love the, the Stranger Things. Maybe the hype machine is getting to me because I didn't yeah. like flip out for this trailer, and I love summertime in a neighborhood like they all have. That was my childhood every single summer. Yeah. Are you mad they're old? No. Not at all. I, I'm. I'm Older. not. I, I, Older. I, I'm like this. This town just keeps getting pummeled by these this stranger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, just... here's what I said to Dennis after because I did love the trailer. I thought it was great. Okay. And what I said to Dennis at the end of it was, "This is the last season with the Demogorgon. You got to. You got to do something new." Agreed. Here. Right. It's well, like after after this season because two two I I. <clears throat> Didn't like as much as the first season, but I liked it. But it was fairly forgettable. Like the first, the first season, totally. I first season I can go into, and I remember so much that happened. Two, I can pick a couple different moments, like Steve yeah. and um, and was Desmond. What's his? What's his? Who's the main? Who's the, who's the main? Who's the kid with the, the well, angry kid? Well, the hat. Well, not Will. The the the, the, the gums. The smile. Oh, um, Dustin. Dustin. Oh, Dustin. 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 Yeah. So uh, them being bus buds. Like that, and they play on that in the trailer names. too. And yeah. I thought that that whole thing. How that, many kids are you friends with? Right. And I they they played with they they built that. 
that relationship in two was the best part of two, I thought. Mm-hmm. And then it leads into three. But I thought all the stuff that they did was cool. And the fact that, they, like you said, they mentioned that they're getting older, that things aren't always going to be the same. And I dug that narrative. But this is the last one. Then we got to move on. And I think someone's going to die this season, too. I think uh, one I, of I think the David, four boys. No, I think uh, David Harbour's toast. Oh. I think he's moving on. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, wow. I think one of the kids should die too. Just, just because. But I don't think. I, don't, I mean, I don't think they should. Yeah, that, that was the wrong thing to, to say. I know. What just you're some saying. stakes. I know what you're saying. Like yeah. as far as character movement goes. Yes. Yeah. Hashtag kill the kids. The only thing I didn't like. Let me get your take on it. At the very end, I was like, great. They threw a symbiote in there. It looked like venom. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last I one, and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, watching it grow. I'm like. You know, I, I, I don't like monsters that are and you can't see what they are. Right. And this was a personality. Seemed it, a mess. It, it took that. Eh, maybe they like mm-hmm. Venom. And I, I that's, that's, my, point, biggie, that's my point, though, is that it, eventually it's like I'm getting tired of the demigorgons. So give me something else. What else is Correct. on the, what else is on the upside down? Because Correct. we know that mm-hmm. it's the town of Hawkins, Indiana is the, what created this yeah. this whole upside down. And so there's a lot of potential there. But yes, uh, to your point, a lot of if it's a demigorgon, a demigorgon, a demigorgon. Like, yeah, what about some other people that are stuck there? And like that, a person has come out of there after like twenty years, and the upside right. down is Some, something crazy like and that. that. And that's that what I'll be great. Get, and again, yeah. no, no spoilers. Like so Alan that's what and us. As much as maybe I didn't like a lot of the stuff that eventually happened because I had questions, I thought it was it was very creative. You're talking uh, about us, the movie, correct? Now. And I thought that there were things inside of that that you did that you could have just started to do over CGI stuff with, and you didn't have to. You when mm-hmm. you you relied on old school filmmaking, and I think you can do that inside of Stranger Things. But um, yeah. one thing us taught us: don't go to Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Boys too. Let's, yeah, yeah I thought Lost Boys Santa, Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, another the the trailer the trailer for Once Upon a Time in America uh, the teaser trailer in Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. I always say America because of that movie. I always Once say Once Upon in Mexico. a Time in <laughs> yeah, movie is also a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Once Upon a Time in uh, mm-hmm. in America. Hollywood. What's fun time in Hollywood? <laughs> um, it it dropped today. It's Tarantino's latest with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. That was a um, that was a very interesting. Marco show. Robbie. It's it, Jeff Snyder yes. got in my ear holes yesterday about these movie posters not being iconic enough, and I get it because you know Pulp Fiction was iconic, Kill Bills were right. iconic, whatever. It was more Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. So the posters it, it, were. Kind they were not. They were. They, were, they, they were, were so the lackluster. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Who gives I, a shit about the poster but at this that's, point? I yeah. See the fucking movie. See, and that's my, always been my thing. It's like, oh, here we're gonna have to review a poster. Like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. That's the worst. So right. But I it's actually, the worst. I hate no. We do that on you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What do you think of the poster? It's fucking yeah, it's a poster. It's, it's, it's a, a picture. Exactly Thank what you. I said. Thank you. I kind of like talking about posters. <laughs> do you? Did you like the poster? Jesus. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only because like you think about putting them on your wall, being a kid, like what was up there. So you talk about it as a good poster, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah. I don't like ripping apart posters, but some posters are really badass. Yeah, this yeah. Po- this poster is doing. It, it, sure. it came and it went. It just, all. All the poster does sure. a lot of times now too. It just lets you know in about two days you're gonna get the trailer. Yeah, yeah. that's what happens now. So when that yeah. came in, I was like, "Oh, cool, we're getting a trailer." I didn't. Th- and I saw people saying it's a shitty poster. Okay, <laughs> how's the trailer? The trailer itself to me oh, was sorry they didn't t- take enough time on the poster. Uh, whatever. Hopefully they spent more time on the movie. I don't know. Whatever. Jesus. The, t- yeah, thank the trailer you. to you, Christian. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I like. I, I, I did too. Because the the one thing that I didn't answer yet because. There, it's a very touchy subject, obviously, with Shannon Tate. You know, mm-hmm. and then the whole thing that that went down. Sharon Tate. What did I say? Shannon. Shannon. Sharon Tate. It's okay. Um, Iwan Durand. Yeah. Uh, like I said. Iwan Sh- Durand. But the thing that happened with Sharon Tate, mm. um, and we've been talking about how people were going to ha- how Tarantino was going to handle that. That's not really explained in this trailer yet. Um, now it the, feels like he maybe isn't gonna. Which is well, they're gonna they're gonna have to tackle it at some point. But just question is, I just want to. Yeah. I'm saying I, in the marketing, it feels like they're not gonna. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, which again, it's if you're you, what it seems like you're focusing is on the dynamic between Pitt and Ca- DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm in. Um, and I Riley was telling me there's some ridiculous cockamamie nonsense. People complaining about the Bruce Lee thing. Yeah, he looked just like Bruce Lee. Sounded Wait, just like him. What were they complaining about? What were they, they complaining? What was this they, nonsense? They complained that, uh, along the lines of, "Oh, that would never happen." He's, he would kick Brad Pitt's ass and all this stuff. But then they don't realize that 
uh, Bruce Lee did train stunt, stunt people all the time. to to you know did learn time. moves. So I think that's what they were showing. And yeah, I thought it was going to go down to this like Will Smith thing where he wasn't Asian enough or something. No, no, like no, no, that. no, no, yeah. no, no, no. It was it was it was it was just it, in lightning fast time. Trailer drops, people complaining. I'm like. Yeah, why are you so, going? He looked just like Bruce Lee. I got a lot of hate too, actually, because Uh-oh. I tweeted out saying, uh, "Once upon a time in Hollywood, we're gonna drop a trailer today. We're a new Tarantino movie. We've got Leo, we've got Pitt, we've got Margot Robbie. You name the A-lister, we're dropping it." And then uh, Stranger Things t- uh, season three, hold my beer, mm. because everybody's talking about Stranger Things. Nobody's talking about this. And everybody's like, "You hate, you're crapping all over the movie." Mm. I was not. I thought the trailer was totally great, but. It's nope. not Stranger Things. But nobody's it? talking about it. And right. it's such a crazy time that we're living in that the Stranger Things trailer is trending number one and Tarantino's film is trending number 12. Yeah, but the right. Tarantino... It's crazy. Yeah. The, the with, difference, with every A-list celebrity. TV is bigger than, than uh, Tarantino. Well, right now. The Stranger Things... is bigger thing, than movies. Right? It's just a cool... It's cool. It's Stranger a cool Stranger Things is something that, it, I mean, has taken a lot of things by storm, right? I, it, since its inception. Right. Tarantino is a... Acquired taste for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, my parents don't like him. A lot of people in outside of Los Angeles and New York don't like Quentin Tarantino. I'm, I'm telling. I, I understood with the first part. The outside LA and New York. I, I'm, I, I'm just I, telling you, man. Like, there's LA a lot of people that aren't aren't cinephiles like we are. That you talk to, and he's like, I, I mean, I guess I like Kill Bill. You right. know what I mean? Right. It's, they're not. They're not like kind of sort of. Everybody you talk to about Stranger Things is like, oh man, it was great. I, I see where you're going. It's right. it, it hits more of a mass all, audience yes. for sure. Um, there. <clears throat> I agree with 75% of your statement. Okay. All right, we got to go again. Cody tells us we have to leave. Um, okay, listen. This was a really... Go yeah. <laughs> Pack show. It was Another gra- show we have to go. It was a packed show. It was a great show. Uh, I had a lot of fun on this show today. I'm glad that everybody uh, was able to hear the, the horror stories of, of Makuga. Um, Hopefully we have some sound clips for you tomorrow. <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Thank you to our guests. Listen, The Dirt, it's coming out this Friday. I cannot wait. Which guests? You son of a bitch. I was almost out. <laughs> but you I'll want me to do it? it? You want I'll me to do it? it? No, no, fuck you. <laughs> You don't get to yeah. anymore, John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Douglas Booth and Iwan Iwan Royal. Close enough. Sure. Woo, talked, about, talked about Woo. the dirt, and we are going to have who on tomorrow? We're having Matt Mercer on, right. as well as Ken Napsack. Ken Napsack will be on the show tomorrow. Oh, man. So make sure that you guys look, hashtag the show at hashtag Collider Live. Join the Facebook group. Make sure you subscribe to this feed, Collider Live. Listen to us on the road or wherever you are, the gym. And get those tickets to schmodownlive.com. If you can get them for the free-for-all this Saturday, do it. And if you can't, then come out to Chicago April 13th or Houston on May 18th at schmodownlive.com. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bullshit.